And welcome to the Great Deception Podcast. I'm your host, Matt. Thanks for joining me. Tonight, we have a return guest. It's going to be fantastic. I got a little housekeeping to do first. I want to thank uh, our newest patrons. We have two new members of the family. We have uh, Jason and Jarrett. Guys, welcome aboard and uh, and thank you for joining. And on that note, Friday and then next Friday. So this Friday, which is, what is that? The 25th, I believe. And then December 2nd, we will have two patrons only calls. So anyone that wants to hop on in the Patreon, we will have two of them. It's going to be fun. Always great discussions, great people. And tonight's guest is one of them. So um, guys, we just wrapped up the Chicago Fire episodes, right? Pesh to go, all that chaos that went on in the Midwest in 1871. Well, our guest tonight, Mr. Matthew Smith, back again. He and I have been talking about the fires, and he found something that blew my mind. So, Matthew, welcome back, my friends. How are you doing, Matt? It's good uh, to be back. I'm so happy to be here tonight. I have had... One of those, we, my son's been battling a, a flu all week. So I've been playing nurse and and the uniform does not fit me well, right? I got big old thighs and it's just too tight. So I finally get to relax and do a little old world tonight with you. Uh, so how you been? I've been good. Uh, kind of the same thing here. My, my youngest boy has been really sick all week. He's been dogged and just sitting in his room kind of fighting fevers and, and hacking up ungodly things and and my wife just got sick and i can feel my throat's getting a little scratchy so we'll get through this together i gotta get you the recipe for this quinine mixture that my okay. buddy ghost my buddy ghost over at the my third eye podcast he uh he has this concoction and it's you know it's a couple of, of fruits and you mix it up while my son's been sick the whole time, I've been, you know, taking shots of this all day and I feel great. So knock on wood. Yeah. Good for you. We'll no, I like good. To, so like we'll get to that get to hold you. of that recipe. I've been, uh, we've been uh, hitting the um, ivermectin. Ooh, the you, horse dewormer. The horse dewormer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Cleaning out our systems, purging. Hey, that's the way, we, but that's what this time of year is, right? That's what flu season is. It's mm -hmm. not, you know, virus season. It's, it's our body shedding. We're supposed to go through this and it's, it's part of the process. And anybody that doesn't detox, you're in for a wild ride because that's, just, it's just going to build up and then it's going to hit you eventually. Right. Yeah. And what, what the nice thing about being sick this year, as opposed to the last two years is you don't have people harping on you to go get tested and, <laughs> You know, oh, it was amazing. I was allowed to, to go. I was allowed school. to go to my son's parent teacher conference, even though I was in direct contact with someone who has the flu. You he and and and, and I, I wasn't a super spreader. Go figure. Well, Matt, where do you want to begin here? Oh, I want to uh hear about your little visit to uh in Seattle today about okay. the old Seattle fires because that my friend when we were texting about that before I'm like oh man I'm like this is this is awesome well so I was out in Ellensburg which is a small town in central Washington state and I live near Seattle but I was out there seeing uh seeing a holistic doctor a friend of mine and uh getting a treatment I was just wandering around town afterwards <clears throat> And they have an old museum, an old historic museum. So I thought, well, I'll stop in here. I've got some time to kill. And wouldn't you know it, as soon as I walked in the door, they had a display of uh, old town, old downtown Ellensburg that, wouldn't you know it, was burned down by a very mysterious arson fire. They consider it arson, but an unsolved mystery. They don't know who and how. But their downtown was burned to the ground uh, in 1889. And what they told me was that Ellensburg was con a contender for uh, to become the first capital or to become cap the capital of Washington State. Now, Washington became a state in 1889. Mm -hmm. And turns out 
Ellensburg burned down a month after Seattle's great fire and a year before downtown Spokane burned down. And Spokane is the other big city in addition to Tacoma. Uh, uh, Spokane is the big city on the eastern flank of the state. And so all of these cities burned to the ground at the same time that Washington gained its statehood. So I found that to be pretty interesting. So here I picked up this gem. Oh, I, I am so I didn't realize those books existed. They These have them great. for like every small town in America now. These are great. So so the mysteries, you open it up and the mysteries just start jumping out at you. This is this is downtown Ellensburg, this little shanty bill in 1886. Okay. But but this building this exquisite castle like office building whatever this is was built in 1890 what and what when you for, look at the pictures, what purpose <clears throat> that's a good question uh it's the state normal school <laughs> get out <laughs> that's a school that's you're gonna a, build a castle a for school. a school oh so, my god <laughs> so it's the same story it's the same story as all of the other burnt out cities and but it burned in 1889 and when i started looking i started seeing old stone and brick buildings not wooden shanties in the photos of the burned out downtown and here's another one wow now yeah. this is the old world building yeah <clears throat> that's brick and so, stone right there so the woman and so this is another example of the type of architecture that was there so somehow it magically went within a few years to wooden shanties to this stuff burned down at the same time washington became a state and then they quickly rebuilt it and the the local historian uh is a very nice local woman um she, she was very eager to share the history with me and she was saying that the the bricks burned so hot that they melted like candle wax straight out of the horse's mouth wow and that it was such a hot fire that it was seen across the valley all the way to yakima which is about 40 miles as the crow flies mm -hmm. i mean that's a pretty mighty fire caused by we don't know arson i mean come I'm on sorry. <laughs> like, I mean, think about that. It, it, it goes back to Mrs. O'Leary's cow in Chicago. I mean, that it's uh, come on. You're, you're telling me this was like a brush fire, like a or you know somebody knocked over a candle, or it's like the fire was so intense. She said that it created its own tornadoes, and so debris was being swept up by these fire nados and and found on the outskirts of the town in the countryside in the aftermath of the fire i mean so this what is, would what would cause an inferno like that yeah and 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 to get that tornadic activity right it's like the hurricanes that mm -hmm. we heard about in 1871 they were talking about these fire hurricanes that were whipping through and it's you, you think about it what would be the cause right we can understand it actually functioning but what causes that? How does that generate? And and that's been a mystery. And that's something they never even explained in Chicago. I mean, there was a a giant cyclone storm that stretched from basically like uh, on the eastern side of Michigan all the way out to the Pacific Ocean, and then from up uh, up to Oregon down to Texas. I mean, we're talking like three quarters of of America was covered by some effect of this uh these cyclonic winds that were were just so happened to be on that day yeah and so it could be a natural cataclysm but i find it to be very curious that all of our you know our our important cities here in washington state before as it became became a state in the same year within a year matthew right within a all year three. all burned down in the downtown district at, at the same time your state you know became a state so what are they what are they going to do now now you're going to start putting up government buildings right you're going to start putting you're going to start doing putting up all this administrative stuff 
And it's almost like, okay, who's got the best bid for us? Who's going to give us all the old records were lost. Gone. Who knows who owns what? You know, deeds, property, you know, papers, documents, all gone. And like we saw in Chicago also, when that happens, right, when you see these massive fires and all the records are burned, the other thing you start seeing now is when the insurance companies get involved, now you start seeing building codes. So now those people that owned that land previously or those structures previously that were wooden structures or whatever, they can't afford to rebuild because of the cost of the code. So now they have to sell their land and basically on the cheap at a loss. And who's comes in to sweep it up? Usually those guys in the black hats. Guys in the black hats. hats rolling out the new electrical grid and getting rid of the old world. It seems like the perfect recipe for a great reset. And we see it in almost every major city, right? Across America in the 1800s and early 1900s. I mean, it's 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 comical because you get to like the mid 1900s and the fires stop, you know, these massive fires. And granted, okay, we upgraded the code and we have better fire departments and stuff. But if, if these fires are on the scale of this and are, are caused by natural things, why don't we see them today? And Other why than California. Why don't, why, why did we all grow up just hearing about the great, you know, fire of Chicago? And why is it just missing from like our historical narrative? Or San Francisco, right? The great quake. I mean, I heard about that, but then I never heard about the world fair they built right after it. It's, it's just, it's one after another. And you're right. It's, it's not only the, the architecture, it's the records. And that's a huge part that people lose when they burn these courthouses down, when they burn these public buildings down, all records are lost. There's no backups. There's There's no no hard drives that they have them on. It's they're gone. And now, you know, and one of the things we did see in Chicago was there was a, a couple people that would go in and they were just, their whole thing was just to get as many records out as possible and take them with them and then like people were so thankful they they saved a lot of people's livelihoods by saving those records because otherwise they're at the mercy of the market afterwards Mm -hmm. so yeah Yeah. and so and and um maybe we can make this a whole another episode but i also found this gem at a local bookstore that is a topic i am down for because underground seattle above ground Mm -hmm. seattle is a mystery to me Yes. And so there's a lot of there's a lot of archival uh, photos in here. There's a a panorama, uh, panoramic photo of Seattle in 1900. And it's just like the beautiful, you know, that that panoramic photo in San Francisco showing an old world city that's completely built out. That just doesn't line up with, you know, the timelines of when. And what year did you say that was? Uh, The photo is from 1900. But again, it's a city that was built, burned down in 1889. Yeah, just 11 years prior. Yeah. Yep. And 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 has a massive amount of underground tunnels. It's not just tunnels. Um it's an actual underground city. Well, like city, it's yeah. A down, it's a downtown underground. Yeah. <laughs> with storefronts and the old signage is still there, you know. So they finished building the city after a great fire. And then decided that they built it too low and had to raise up the street level. It's very mysterious, Matt. That's another another thing they mastered in the in the mid and late eighteen hundreds. They could just pick up anything and move it. Well, they had levitation back then, didn't they? Yeah, <laughs> like the Coral Castle guy. Mm-hmm. You want to? Uh, <clears throat> what, you have a presentation for us tonight, huh? I do. I do. I, I love it. I am a visual guy. So anyone that brings visuals is a friend of mine. All right. Well, maybe um, maybe we can try to describe these images as well as we go um, for the people that are just listening to the audio, because it is a it is a visual heavy presentation, um, I think, graphically. And, you know, like I explained to you earlier, I try to catch up with images with words you know I, I try to catch up to the imagery with words um but it's just the way my my mind works i'm an architect a designer and 
So I, you know, I throw the images out there and then try to, uh, I try to explain them as we go. So we'll, we'll, uh, we'll have a go at it. Um, the premise of this is a little background information. The last time we talked, uh, we spoke about American rock cement uh, found in old world American architecture that was comparable in quality and longevity to Roman cement, as opposed to the cheap and brittle conglomerate Portland cement that made the new world. We discussed its potentiality to uh, uh, be conductive, to, has, to have piezoelectric properties due to its high silica content, um, also known as quartz. And we looked at the engineering of rock cement mining, uh, 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 the, the masterful engineering um, of, of the rock cement um, in the mines that were rediscovered in recent decades, uh, for instance, at the Widow Jane mine in Roswell, or Roslyn, New York, as well as uh, many other locations throughout our land. And when they rolled out the modern, uh, the modern era, um, uh, to remind people uh, that that's when they started using this Portland cement, importing it, and it's just this cheaper conglomerate, very brittle material by comparison. And so recently, Matt, we started looking at um, bricks and how bricks are now being studied um, as uh, to be used as batteries due to their high iron content. And um, so that's outlined in this Scientific American article that you shared with me uh, titled Bricks Can Be Turned Into Batteries. Who knew? So this raises the compelling question, uh, did our ancestors already have this technology? or some variation of it. Yeah, and it's interesting you say that because uh, I was just reading, I just picked up this book, it's called Fire and Stone, and it's about old star forts. And it was talking about how they um, were working on the masonry and how they had mastered the ability to uh, do sublevels. And it was because of the Roman cement. And I, I remember when you mentioned last time that the Roman cement actually, you know, it, it was waterproof in a, in a sense. And what they said in it, they actually gave a makeup of it. They say the waterproof cement for cisterns, foundations, and underground chambers was usually composed of a mixture of two parts unslacked lime, one part sand, and one part pulverized terrasse a stone of volcanic origin, which was quarried in the Rhineland. Interesting. Yeah. And, and so Grass. it says when no terrace had, to, uh, was to be had a passable substitute was provided by burning and pulverizing tiles. Tiles. So they're almost using ceramic. Huh? At that point. So I found that really interesting and it all, you know, all these things are all starting to tie in and finding little bits and pieces but that was that really drew my interest after talking about the American cement last time and how similar it was to the Roman, and to actually see a, a you know a high level recipe of it, it was like oh that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Interesting, man. So <clears throat> so I'm fascinated. I've long been fascinated by uh, the uh, this idea that that old world architecture uh, and and sacred structures in particular uh, have some innate quality some some characteristics that actually uh just the buildings themselves and the spaces that they create elevate the human spirit body and mind that there's some quality so i've been i've been down this rabbit hole for some time and i'm, I'm super excited to share this uh, presentation with you and um and so what I'm trying to do is bring together uh, two areas of interest of mine. One is this old world architecture uh, of area of research. And then the other is um, electric universe theory. And so I that's one of our buddy, random Randy's favorite uh, topics. He is he's got that down and we got to get with him and sit down and have a chat about that. Yeah, I would love to talk to Randy about it. Um, there's a, a, a group called the Thunderbolts Project on YouTube, and that I would recommend anybody and everybody that's interested in this subject to go and just pour through their 
uh, videos and, and, and documents, and they've been at this for decades. And they do a really good job of um, presenting. It's an alternative uh, physics, an alternative cosmology. I could say it's an alternative physics that um, supports an alternative cosmology. But it's also one that lends itself to comparative mythology because they look at the old myths uh, as uh, eyewitness events, as a, as basically historic records, not just fairy tales. The old the old mythologies and religions, and they go back and they've gone back and studied the mythologies of the world, and they connect dots, uh, which po point to the point to the idea that much of what was being recorded in, in these ancient sacred texts were actual eyewitness events at a time when our atmosphere was a lot more um a lot more high um more highly charged electrically and they look at the work of Velikovsky, uh, who wrote uh, books uh, such as World in, uh, Worlds in Collision. Uh, and he talks about, how, and this was, I guess, starting in the 1950s. Uh, and he talks about how um, the, the solar system is not this stable clockwork that, you know, Newton would have um, believed, for instance, it, that it's actually... Uh, subject subject to change over time and and when the celestial bodies when the planetary bodies move around well uh interesting things happen in the in the skies to say the least well and that's and, it's interesting <laughs> you say that because the 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 calendars back in the day one calendar system was based on the lunar uh movement and then one was based on the solar and those two calendars differed and I always found that interesting because I, I, I just started diving back into the Book of Enoch. And that's one of the things they explained in, in, in the beginning is, is the calendars and the Enochian calendar. And the uh, you had the Hebrew calendar and there was one other uh, calendar at the time. But that was one of the things they talked about, how the patterns were different. So the yeah. years were off and they had to add on things to get them to line up. Yeah, I mean, one of the things that they really emphasize <clears throat> is that um, in, there's this idea of the golden dawn of civilization, known as the purple dawn, and that at one time um, in human memory, uh, Saturn actually was our sun, and then mm -hmm. we, the Earth, was within the the what, what do you call it the the heliosphere, the uh, um, of of Saturn, and then things changed, and it was it was catastrophic, and there was um, you know all sorts of catastrophes, and and again when planets move around, uh, they they there's uh, electrical discharges, plasma discharges between them, and it's a it's a very deep rabbit hole in itself and i'm a student of it i'm by no means an expert uh, i try to follow along but the part of it that really um captivates me is just this basic idea that the universe that reality is electrical in nature and that gravity is definitely not the the um, sh strongest organizing force in in the universe that gravity is a, basically a, 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 a it's a weak force but it's a subset of electrical properties and we're gonna we're gonna get into this and so when i look at megalithic architecture and old world architecture i think a big missing piece for this whole uh um field of research is this question of electric universe electric universe theory or plasma physics because the because we're looking at we're looking at resonance when we look at a cathedral or we look at a sacred building 
we're looking at, you know, they say, uh, was it the Goethe quote that uh, architecture is frozen music? Well, it's, it really is that. It's, it's, it's resonance, frequency, and vibration frozen in, in stone and glass and precious metals. So we're going to expound on that. Uh, so the presentation that I'm going to make will attempt to show that sacred structures and, and cathedrals in particular are indeed electromagnetic field generators. And in addition to the electric properties of old world cement, brick and stone, we have just by the very the very uh, nature of these buildings by their actual geometry, by their sacred geometry, we have structures that are capable of channeling etheric energies into their occupants. I'm with you. The, the sacred geometry aspect is you see it everywhere, right? It's not just in the buildings either. It's in everything in life. And, um, you know, I've had some, uh, experiences on mushrooms where you go out and you just start seeing these patterns everywhere <clears throat> it's just sacred geometry everywhere and then you start noticing it in everything you look at the flowers yeah. you look at the tree and it's just it's like the building block you know that's the source it seems like and that's where we get all of our energy out of yeah i i think there's uh uh plant medicines, we'll call them entheogens. I think they're there to sort of unlock our consciousness to, to start to see these uh, patterns and, mm -hmm. and to, and I mean, I, that's been my experience too with mushrooms or, or have, uh, more recently gotten into ayahuasca. And I, I do, I do believe that. I think that when you, when you're under the influence, you are, you're able to perceive um, etheric field, the yes. etheric field. And that's it's that's one thing I notice is that yeah you notice that etheric field around you and you feel it more you're mm -hmm. in tune with it almost I think you know a lot of this the frequencies that we're beaten down with and just the general way of living now we yeah. we, we've detached from that and that's that's where the big disconnect is and and we yeah. say it all the time I mean that's something I've reiterated over and over again I feel like the old world and when I talk about the old world. It's that connection with nature. They were in tune with nature. Everything was natural. Now everything is forced. It's not natural. We've gone so in the opposite. We've done a 180. You know, we're in the we're the opposite of natural. We're into the fake. Fake yeah. is what is in this era. D disconnected is the operative word there. Yes. And yeah, that's the age of modernity has disconnected us from each other. They got rid of the ether. <clears throat> they tried, you know, they insist that it doesn't exist. Well, I, I think they're just flat out wrong or lying. Um, and um, yeah, so under mushrooms or, you know, in, in, in my case, um, exper not experimenting, but working with ay ayahuasca, we we regain that sense of connect connectivity to each other as human beings, to to the world around us, to to the cosmos not to get too woo but that's just how it is right yep oh without a doubt i mean that's it's and i wanted to i'm trying to pull up uh a couple pictures here that i wanted to no that's the wrong one i think let's see yeah that's the wrong that's dante <clears throat> and matt keep in mind and this this is critical with this electric universe theory and just kind of understanding what we're getting on about with um you know our trip experiences you know, they say that plasma is the fourth state of of matter. You know, we have we have solid, liquid, and gas, and also plasma gets gets like honorable mention. But plasma is the essential state of matter. Plasma is plasma is like ninety nine plus percent of all matter in the universe is is plasma. This the sun is a ball of plasma, and the source of all of our life. And so, you know, in the, in the visible spectrum that we perceive with our eyes, it's just a narrow sliver of the, of the full spectrum of life, of light. So there's, 
there's a lot of stuff going going on around us all all the time that we're just not able to perceive with our basic senses as narrowed down to you know to get by in the in the modern world and and that's the thing that people don't understand they think that they see everything you know that everything around them that they can perceive and it's like no 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 you are you how much can you really see here i mean that's that's something that i don't think people really understand is that our perception of what is in this world is so slim i mean we're we're barely looking through slits in a hole in the wall to mm-hmm. see out and and, what, mm-hmm. and you get people who you know are talking down on things like uh oh what are you looking at things like ghosts apparitions spirits demons it's possible they exist and we just can't see them sure absolutely um entities of all sorts are are out there um you know in different cultures graham hancock wrote a book called super i think it's called supernatural and he he goes through different cultures and different times and compares their their myths of you know fairies and we folk to like you know today people refer to uh alien alien abduction this and that but the story neatly with each other it's just that there's just a different you know a different sensibility for the modern age you know and we don't talk about fairies but people talk about having encounters with aliens and that just might be the way we interpret uh um interpret things when we have encounters with things that aren't just part of the part of the like you know the material um um realm as as uh, again as our our senses have been narrowed down just to perceive you know a, a sliver of it and see that's that's the other thing Matt um I want to put this out there that you know modern science scientism has they've they've separated science and spirituality yes to such an extent that well we're we're suffering from it I think that we're suffering as as a society greatly um because of this sort of atheistic approach to to understanding the nature of reality and I think that's a really, and I'm talking to somebody who was, you know, an atheist for 20 years. I grew up Christian and then I, you know, rejected all of that and, and embraced atheism because I thought that was cool and smart. And then, you know, again, with uh, mushrooms and ayahuasca, I quickly realized, you know, it, 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 you can't explain what's going on here through atheism. There's way more to this mystery of life. I mean, how do you get from non-life to life in the first place? Exactly. Well, that's the thing. And the atheists, who do they always hate? They hate God. Well, that's totally backwards because how do you hate something that doesn't exist? Well, that's just father issues. I think. Oh, yeah. That, oh, it totally is. And I went through an atheist, you know, what I would call, I, I for most of my life, I was agnostic because I every time I went to church, I had nothing but a bad experience as a child or, you know, and growing up. So I wasn't, that turned me off to religion, but I always felt like there was something. Right. So I was kind of agnostic. Then I got into like high school, early college, and I went through an atheist period where I'm like, oh, there's no God. There can't be any God. You know, the material world is great, blah, blah, blah. And, and then all of a sudden I had the awakening and I'm like, oh, shit. I'm like, no, no, no. There's no way all of this has happened without a creator. And and the idea, too, with and, and again, I'm going to keep referring back to this electric universe theory, the idea that life essentially is plasma in nature which is electrical in nature and so this idea that this uh sort of modern modern scientific idea that consciousness comes out of the mind you know these firing synapses produces is, you know they're able to combine in such a way as to produce consciousness well that's a mystery um how that could happen but i think so i've arrived at, at the understanding that uh, you know, we exist within consciousness. All of life exists within consciousness. Call it the mind, call it the ether, call it God, call it light. You know, there's lots of names for it. But we all exist within that. And so that our our minds, our, well, our brain acts more as a receiver to what's out there. And so we can tune ourselves up and plug ourselves into it if we so choose. 
And again, these sacred structures, I think that's what they're for. They're there to help us tune ourselves to, to a higher consciousness, to the divine. Yeah, I think I, I'm with you. Absolutely. I think that every, and anything that is built with using these sacred geometric patterns, I, I feel like there's, it, it has a whole different feel to it. It has a whole different intention behind it. And that's a lot of it too. I mean, when you think about the architecture nowadays, the intention behind it is cheap, quick, efficient. Disposable. Yeah, dispose of that's the best. It's just, you know, it's, it's, and I mean, it's brutal. It's called that for a reason. You know, I mean, it's just, and you think about it and it's mind blowing because I don't understand how people can't see this and how people can't, you know, well, because our consciousness has been lowered. Yes. But I, yeah, I guess it was a rhetorical question <laughs> right. because yeah, it is obvious it's, it's, it, and it's funny because I've been having this conversation a lot lately with people trying to get them to understand because people are getting frustrated with not being able to connect with certain people. Hmm. And I've heard over and over again on different, and, and it presented in different formats that, listen, you have to understand we're all on different frequencies. So Say you're trying to listen to the radio where you are, but that radio station, you can't pick it up. So no matter how much you try and, and dial it in, you're not going to tune into that frequency. You're not going to get it. So when you're talking with someone who just does not understand, you know, the typical, they give you that fluoride stare, it's, they're on a different frequency. They're not meant to engage in this stuff at that time they're not going to hear you no matter how ver well versed you are no matter how you know great you think you can explain it they're not going to hear you it's like when uh you know uh who is it in, was it charlie brown that heard lucy in in the peanuts and it was just wah, 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 or the teacher that was all the adults sounded like yeah that. and that's that's what they sound like to you so stop you know, you have to understand we're all on different frequencies and some of us connect, some of us don't connect. And that's part of the reason why. I used to really, I used to really struggle with it because of my Christian background. I felt like, well, once you have the truth, you have to go and convert other people to it. So I'd run around telling people, hey, do you know that sacred structures do, 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 do all this stuff? And people like, oh, that's, you know, they'd shrug maybe and, and just kind of, you know, go back to the ball game. But it, it, I, and I did the same thing with ayahuasca when I got into that. I really wanted to, you know, tell everybody about it. And I quicker, quickly realized that, um, yeah, like you're saying, so people are in different frequencies. And it's not arrogant to to come to terms with that. I think it's actually important because. No, because, no, you because have, Matthew, you're living in your truth. That's right. It. And I'm living in my truth and their truth is different. And that's what we have to understand. And the, the fact that we want to convert everyone to our truth is the problem it's ego you know and that's what it boils that's down the to the move is to try to convert people that's right yep and mm -hmm. it's like no 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 that's not the move the move is if if they want to learn you teach if not move on and there is someone out there that's willing to learn and that's who you have to connect with yeah and it can it can even be dangerous to try to wake up a sleepwalker oh without a doubt yeah you don't want to poke a, a zombie you know let him be and, you know, uh, Matt, I, I didn't know we were going to be talking about this stuff, but if people are interested in ayahuasca, I'll just put this out there. This is amazing book called The Fellowship of the River by Joe Tafur. This this fellow is a real gem. He's a Colombian American. Uh, um, he's he's a trained uh, medical doctor who went back to his roots and uh, in Colombia and you know, began studying medicinal plants, um, you know, with, with the tribes. And, uh, and he, he does an amazing job of pulling together the, the science of modern medicine with, you know, traditional ways of healing. Um, so yeah, the fellowship of the river would just be an outstanding place for people to go. Oh, that's excellent. I will put that, I will put a link to that in the show mm -hmm. notes for everyone that's interested. Yeah. I don't usually get into ayahuasca much on my show. So that's a, this is a first and, and it's honestly, it's one of those things I've been interested in, but out here in new England, I don't think it's as prevalent as it is. Uh, it's, it's 
it's there. Um, we'll talk <laughs> offline. Sounds you good. Can always come here, Matt. Come out. Come on out and visit, and and uh, I'll introduce you. Oh boy, don't tempt me with a good time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, <clears throat> do we want to dive into the official formal presentation? Yeah, I would love to. <laughs> I've been so anxious since this. since you told me you had a presentation. I'm I'm a visual guy, so any like, like I said, anybody that brings a presentation, it's already a win in my book because I can I can learn that way. Now, anybody that's uh, listening, if you want to uh, watch this, it w- it will be free on the Patreon. It will be on. YouTube, hopefully they don't kick it off. And then uh, also on Spotify, you can watch the video. So, and you're going to want to watch it. Matthew's going to bring 15 amazing slides here. Well, let's, let's do it. Um, So I have to screen share. And we're just going to talk our way through this, Matt. Okay. It's, I haven't, you know, I haven't, uh, I haven't, honed my presentation skills so we're just going to go through it a little at a time here now you let me know if i've done this correctly because you can see let's see here we go you see my screen jackpot cool all right we are in by the way this drawing is one of my favorite this this image here is one of my favorites so this, I you know, and I, disclaimer here, I pulled images from the internets. I this is not original artwork. There's um, there was too many images here to to source. They're common images. I'm just you know what I'm trying to do is connect dots. So I don't claim authorship over over the artwork or the imagery in here. This cover image really is, I did do this collage, uh, so I put my little handle on there. Um, the idea of the cathedral being superimposed over over the earth with its electromagnetic field uh, surrounding the, the cathedral. And it's really, this was the, this was the, um, the crystallization really of, of the idea of what I was trying to get at is that all bodies all living bodies have an electromagnetic field now before anybody with real knowledge about electromagnetic uh, uh principles jumps on this i i understand enough to get into trouble whether i'm wiring my house or whether i'm talking about <laughs> electromagnetic field theory i understand that uh it's dielectric on one side and magnetism on the other and that together you get electricity. That's my understanding of it. I'm a layman when it comes to this. These are all of my disclaimers going in because I'm a little bit out of my league. Uh, so again, I'm just a generalist trying to connect some dots and put some ideas out there. Uh, so starting out with some quotes from our friend Albert Einstein. He says, what we have called matter is energy. There is no matter. Now, so this is a very interesting quote because Albert Einstein also denied the existence of the, of the ether, which drove uh, Nikola Tesla up a wall. So um, next quote, light is nothing but a sound wave in the ether. So that that right there, it's just worth pausing on and just kind of it's its own meditation because we understand light as particles that that go through empty space from point A to point B. But what this is saying is that there's no there's no particle traveling. If we have an ether, if we have a medium, that light is a perturbation, it's a it's a disturbance, an agitation of the etheric field. And that's what we and we'll get a little bit more into that as we go. Uh, Ken Wheeler and I got a lot of my um, my understanding from Ken Wheeler, and he's on YouTube, and he's just an outstanding uh, proponent of of this way of looking at uh, physics, ether physics. 
Um, I would, I would definitely, along with Thunderbolts project, I would definitely encourage people to check out the work of Ken Wheeler. Yeah. I definitely recommend Ken also. Ken, Ken is a smart, smart guy. Yeah. Uh, So he says uh, humorously matter is hard light. And so then one from Walter Russell, God is life. God is light. God is all that is. So here again, um, God, consciousness, the greater mind is light. Light is matter. We're all we're all in it together, so to speak, right? So it, it's 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 layers, right? It all it all connects, but it's it's like a, a onion, right? You have to pull back the layers, but without it, it's it's nothing. And I'm with you. I don't. I love Einstein. Einstein seems to be like the Elon Musk of of his time because he was just like an agent of chaos. Um, yeah. Ken Wheeler also says that he stole E equals M C square from a French physicist named, and I'll butcher this. So, um, maybe we can put a show note at the end to get this right. But Henri Juan. Foray, I think, and I probably just messed that up. But that, that, but that wasn't even his original idea um, uh, or breakthrough that e equals MC square. So, well, moving right along. So the idea that I'm trying to put forward is that old world architecture has an electrical essence. Now, we're familiar with these toroidal images, right? When we look at an apple, what have you, we look at the human body. There's we often see when we look at the um, images of like the of the uh, electro. I'm just gonna I'm gonna use electromagnetic field because it's easy and people are familiar with that, even though it might not be technically correct. Uh, so we see this sort of toroidal field around a living body, whether it be a human tree plant yep why plant. did they have a six feet apart it was to separate our toroidal fields yes the human the human because the human body has a toroidal field that goes out six feet around it and that's why you know people when you when you walk by someone sometimes you don't even have to touch them you get the goosebumps on the back of your neck and that's your fields crossing that's your energies crossing and you, you're getting that vibe that yeah, maybe this isn't the right vibe I want to be in. You're 100% right. And that shows how devious all of that really was. It was mm-hmm. completely arbitrary, but it was also just straight up evil. Yeah, it was just forced children to, yep. to, to, to socially distance. All of that was just so harmful. And it shows, but it, it's it's relevant to this, right? Because we are, we are energy. We, we are full of it. And, and plasma, right? You look at the sun. The sun is just a giant ball of plasma. So that's so. Th- and, and we're going to get into this. So um, let me s- tell me if you can hear see my um, mouse. Yes. Yeah. OK, good. Because just that you said that the sun is a ball of plasma. Now, 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 the idea of this is that. Plasma is scalable. Plasma phenomena is fully scale, scalable from the macro to the micro. The same type of phenomena happens at all levels. It's it's self-similar and it's fractal. So it, you have at the galactic scale, galaxies have a toroidal electromagnetic field. Uh, and we won't get too much into dark matter and dark energy and all of the things that modern physics has had to conjure up to explain why, for instance, the stars on the outer most uh, flank of a galaxy spin around at the same rate as the stars on the inside, because gravity can't explain that. Centripetal forces would have this thing fly apart. So they had to come up with, you know, these um phantom forces such as dark matter is pushing in on a galaxy to hold it together uh, uh, the electric universe theory does not have that problem so you have you have these toroidal fields around galaxies you have it at the celestial scale around suns and you have it at the planetary scale so the earth has its own electromagnetic field 
Now, my understanding is that what, when when people are when we witness um, uh, the aurora borealis, the northern lights, what we're seeing is where the uh, electric field of the Earth is is supercharged as it as it hits the Earth. So again, going back to this idea that the ancients in in the olden times, the atmosphere was more highly electric charged, so more plasma phenomena was visible to our ancestors, and well, we'll get into that. So this again is from Ken Wheeler. Um, this breakdown. So you have you have the zero point. People talk about zero point energy, right? How do we get perpetual and free energy? Well, the zero point is is where the torus folds in on itself and comes back out again. And so that's the dielectric point. The magnetic point, magnetism, is what happens out in the in the out here in the field. So, so, and again, I, I just give all the credit to Ken Wheeler and, and I'm, I consider myself a student of his. Um, I'm really, as I go, I'm trying to understand this at a deeper level. I took my notes from his last, one of his last podcasts and I transposed them onto this presentation here. So I'm, I'm learning this as I'm actually doing the presentation. Um, so the, so the magnetism is the field outside of the zero point uh, dielectric. This is the toroid. The hyperboloid is what's in here. This is the hyperboloid, right? It's the hourglass on the inside. Um, the anode is the magnetic field. The cathode is the dielectric zero point. Uh, this can also be the the magnetic field can also be associated with heat and the dielectric zero point can be associated with cold. And he makes this what I think is a really profound uh, uh, point that it's the zero point is this is light. That's the source. What we perceive as light is really illumination. And he makes that distinction. And it's it's really profound. And it's something that I'm just, you know, sitting with and kind of uh, taking on as a, a meditation, but the idea that what we perceive as light is really illumination and that light itself is, it's the source. And it's the nothing versus the everything of the magnetic field. So when we experience reality, we're experiencing the magnetic field opening up. Okay. So it'd be the presence and absence of light. It's the everything and the nothing. Okay. Yeah. Wow. That's an interesting take on it. I I can relate to that though. You know, it makes sense. And you you look at it and you look at you think about how our realm is set up, right? I mean, we have magnetic energies all over the place. It's and they tell us it's a north and south pole, um, which is, you know, interesting, but oh man, this is great. Yeah, and the north and, and south pole, this I'm I find this curious too because we think about it in these terms um but i think maybe I, I was listening to one of randy's podcasts where somebody he was interviewing was talking about how the actual the, the north and south was actually inside and outside that that the polarity existed within and without mm -hmm. and that's a different way of looking at it um so again, and I, I invite anybody that listens to this and 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 has something to contribute or, or can offer some clarity to these concepts to please like reach out. Oh, I'd love it. Yeah. Comments. You know, we're we're just learning as we go here. So <clears throat> so again, you know, plants and, and trees are rooted in the electromagnetic field of the earth just by their being rooted. Yeah. Right. A tree doesn't have trouble maintaining an electromagnet its mag electromagnetic field in alignment with the earth's because it's rooted in the earth and that's that's the source of its life and it'll, it'll never move from that as long as it's living um and an apple you know an apple grows on the tree right so it's going to have a perfectly intact electromagnetic field when you when it's picked um here, this is this is a, a bone to the to the flat Earth community because I just think <laughs> this is a super cool graphic. Um, it, it's showing the the plane of the realm, 
with the tree moving through the center of the mountain and then cycling back in on itself. Um, and so I, I love this graphic, although I'm not a proponent um, for the same reason that I, uh, I'm not a proponent of flat apples. <laughs> but that's all I'll say about that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like this. This is that was really interesting there because the and again that gets into the whole as above, so below concept too. Yes. Which is a whole nother level to this, but oh, that's this. exactly it. And and the alchemical principles um behind cathedrals are very important to to understanding this. Mm-hmm. Um, and incidentally, Jay, Jay Widener is a, a, a really good source for this, um, the alchemical um, concepts and uh, explaining maybe who built the, the cathedrals and why. Uh, he has some things to say about that. <clears throat> so human beings, uh, on the other hand, we're, we're not rooted, right? And we're, we're seeking a connection with divinity. We're trying to find ways to align our our light body with the divine, you know, with the earth, but but with the, the with the divine, with the source, ultimately. <clears throat> well, and that's why that's why grounding is so significant, right? I mean, yep. I never believed in any of that, and honestly, for a good. 35 years of my life, I would not take my shoes off. <laughs> and it's like, you know, I got brainwashed by the system to believe that, you know, these are the best things ever for your feet. And then all of a sudden you start taking your shoes off and you start walking around and you're like, oh, wow, there's yeah. something too that you feel that energy. You feel the connection come through you. Yeah, the, the hippies, uh, they they had they were onto something with that one for sure. Going yep. barefoot on the beach or in the grass. Well, and that that also <clears throat> leads you to think about, you know, all the concrete that's out there, mm-hmm. all the the asphalt that's out there that inhibits that, you know, and, and the rubber on your shoes. And I think of all the rubber that's out there to inhibit connection and prohibit connection. So yeah, and so you wonder why there's so much dis-ease. It's yep. just like everywhere you turn, we're disconnected from the source. Yeah. So this is what we're after, right? I, and I think, you know, this search uh, uh, um, of old world architecture, I think in in, in a lot of ways is is this uh, yearning that we have. And this it's a nostalgia for something that, you know, was just there j- just yesterday. It, it, it was still somewhat intact or mostly intact even you know not too long ago and and so we've been ripped out of that um more sort of natural um and you know i like to call it the analog world yes and re- yeah and, and that's course. that's been my draw to this my draw to the old world is you know i mean the buildings are amazing but it's that health side of it right that connection that that the the positive frequencies the connection with nature that we've lost and you know and and that's what i i'm searching for you know is to find out how do we get humanity healthy again on the right path you know maybe not it's not going to be through their system it's going to have to be outside the system but how do we how do we get back to that old way where there were you know, connections. We were in tune with our realm, where as today we couldn't be more disconnected. Yeah. And 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 so what role can architecture play in this? Because there's a lot of different approaches. People use tuning forks, they use, you know, what we talked about, you know, entheogens that, you know, um meditation, um just walking, hiking, you know, there's yep. lots of different ways of getting back to it, but architecture plays an important role. So looking at the examples of the old world and what it was that they were doing uh, can, re, you know, can help us uh, get to better tomorrows, I, I think. Oh, I'm with you on that. Absolutely. So, so, so this idea here is that a magnet is an inside out AC generator, or you can say an AC generator is an inside out magnet. And that again is from Ken Wheeler um, and Ken Wheeler. He's, you know, he's, he's very uh, versed in the, in the work of, of Tesla um, and, and all of the, um, you know, the physicists of that day, heavy side and, and, and others that um, 
understood the existence of the ether. And if you think about, he he talks about how a, a, an AC generator is not producing energy. It's it's channeling it. And again, here it's like the limit of my own understanding and, and knowledge. Uh, so I'll let people kind of like ponder on this idea. But when I heard Ken talk about magnets being an inside out AC generator and vice versa, it, it's kind of like the light bulb went off, like figuratively and literally. It's like, oh, so magnets, by being magnets, are a, they have an electrical mag, well, ele <laughs> electromagnetic field that is aligned with a zero point of a greater electromagnetic field the right? receptors right yeah as, as a way of looking at it they're drawing energy directly from the ether without combustion there's no burning of fossil fuels needed and so this diagram here kind of shows you know how different different forms of magnets uh can you know, you can manipulate the 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 field with how you orient the magnets and the poles to one another and it's just a simple experiment of of taking a, a magnet and wrapping copper wire around it proves that electricity and mag magnetism are two sides of a coin where you have electricity you have magnetism and where you have magnetism you have electricity yeah, and I I have multiple examples of this that I've you know I've downloaded over time of of people just creating electricity off of magnets, mm -hmm. you know magnets and a little bit of wire and boom there you go. And another guy to check out um, who's a real has a really fun YouTube channel is uh, Parker Edmondson. He's, he's the, the best. <laughs> he's he's just one of my favorites. You know, he he wants to live in the 1800s. I give I want to I want to meet that guy someday because he's in the process of trying to get a house, an old house, and he wants to renovate it to the period mm. and uh and and try and get it running on free energy. And that would just be the coolest thing, man. Yeah, that'd be the cat's meow right there. It'd be great to see if he could figure out the uh the radiant fireplace. Mechanic. Yes, that's that's one of the things I'm interested in is that those radium fireplaces, because you look at these old, old places with these just massive fireplaces, but there's no chimney. Right. It's like, whoa, well, where's the smoke go? <laughs> Not only is there no chimney, there's precious artwork hanging over the over the mantle. Yes, which you wouldn't really want to do if you were burning logs down there. Yeah, no, I, I, they tend to uh, give off soot and dirt, and yeah, and smoke. You know, they just yeah, it's not good for fine art. So it, I mean, just right there, like you can picture it. If you if you have, you know, a fractal antenna going up into the atmosphere, and you have grounding, right, stone, iron grounding and you're you're creating a circuit and then you perturb the field with with the 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 elements of of what do they call those stanchions that sit out front of those old fireplaces um there's a name for that they they're kind of like sometimes shaped like gargoyles but they're those metal they say that you're you put logs on them that's yeah the, the pair really, of, yeah i forgot what they're called but I think that what they were doing there is creating this cathode anode uh, electrical connection connectivity and producing producing um, heat. Yep. Through that, and I, once you start getting your head around some of these concepts, it's not that far out. Not at it, all. But people don't want to grasp the concept. Because they've been indoctrinated well in this school system to believe that this is, oh, this is nonsense. Come on, guys. Well, yeah, it gets dismissed out of hand, especially by academia and all the smart people, right? The experts. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so, so you know, sometimes it feels like, uh, you know, the Sisyphus syndrome, accepting that, you know, the, 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 the hill of beans that modern scientism is built upon is quickly eroding. So 
I think that this is what's going to be emerging as that continues to fall apart. So now we're looking at, we looked at BRICS, right? And this is straight from that Scientific American article where they're, uh, um, they're able to manipulate just the simple clinker brick in such a way as to uh, um, enable it to hold charge. So, so here again, okay, our building's electric. Now this gets a little bit more into the electric universe idea. And, and so this, there's this idea that, you know, within modern science that stars and our sun in particular are, are nuclear furnaces, right? And it's all held together by gravity and it's churning out however many trillions of tons of uh, hydrogen atoms. And what the electric universe theory says is that's kind of a load of bunk. That, that stars are not nuclear furnaces. They're not, the heat is not being generated from within the star. And what they'll do is they'll point to the corona of the stars and in our sun in particular being many, many, many times hotter than the core. Yep. And so if the if the sun was a nuclear furnace, how come the hottest part isn't in the center? How come the hottest part is way out in the corona? And by far the hottest. And so what the electric universe proponents uh suggest is that stars are formed along pinch points of what are called Birkeland currents. Birkeland currents were named for a physicist um, of the late 1800s, I believe, named Christian Birkeland. And he did actual plasma experiments um, showing this stuff in so that throughout <coughs> throughout the vastness of space, there are uh, pairs of plasma filaments, um, again called Birkeland currents, that when they wrap around one another, they they intensify, and so then you get stars along along these pairs of filaments, and they refer to them as pearls pearls on a string. The filaments being the string. And Walt Walt Thornhill, he's sort of like the godfather of the Thunderbolts project. And he explains this eloquently. Um, so I would, again, I'd recommend people go and check out the work of Walt, Walt Thornhill. Um, yeah, Matthew, and, and for anybody listening, the I love the diagram that you have here at the bottom where it has, you know, the two stars and then it shows them basically as they're getting closer and then almost as they link, right? And then they start spinning in almost, a, it looks like a counterclockwise fashion until at the end initially they start with two 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 dots so to speak mm -hmm. and then by the end of it you've had them twist and merge into almost a, a yin yang sign mm -hmm. now what those two dots are what those are are actual cross sections of these plasma filaments mm -hmm. so you can see it in the visual here where you have if you took a cross section here you'd get this sort of owl-like form, right? Yep. And then as the filaments begin to twist around each other, you get this, yeah, this yin and yang uh, twisting, swirling, like hurricane-like pattern. And what's interesting about the magnetic one is it's almost like a bullseye, right? I mean, you have layers of, of of circles where in the plasma side it's totally uh like you were saying it's a swirl a yin yang pattern it's it's a, a different perspective of it yeah and so and so um if we can imagine for a moment that stars are powered from without by these circuits by these uh plasma filaments called Ber berkeley currents well, then it's kind of a game changer because we go back to the 
we go back to the images from earlier where you have um, galaxies, charging stars, charging planets, charging us. Yep. Right? You can see the self-similarity and the fractal nature of this. <clears throat> oh. And so here's some further experimentation where, and maybe you've seen these ferro cell experiments where they'll take uh, just two sheets of glass and they'll put a ferro fluid, which is just like a super thin, highly viscous fluid um, in the middle and shine a light through. And then when you add a magnet to it, what emerges is really the conjugate nature of the universe. You see, without having to take mushrooms, you can see the nature of the the geometry of the ether. Yeah, I mean, that looks like the flower of life almost. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. Yes. And again, when you look at this, okay, so that's, the, whoops, got ahead of myself. This is a, this is a plasma formation. And so you can see again, these owl eyes here again, with this, the simple, um, you know, charge running through a copper wire and in the, in the iron filings, creating this owl like um, field pattern. And then when when you look at petroglyphs, and this is another case that they make, is that petroglyphs are a record of plasma formations that were witnessed all over the earth, which could help explain why the motifs of, of petroglyphs are so similar, no matter where you go. And uh, I believe it was Anthony Peratt. Um, I hope I got that right. That actually went and actually studied in situ uh, petroglyphs and documented, showed that they face the same direction with, you know, over great distances. Really? And they'll have this similar carvings very far apart from each other, miles, hundreds of miles apart, but facing the same direction, which seems to suggest that they were recording something that they were seeing in the sky. And you see different ones like Jacob's Ladder is another plasma formation. Um, th this is why I'm wearing this T-shirt. Uh, you see this, the the, the stick man. Yep. And this, this image here is actually a plasma generated image in a laboratory really yeah and it's a it's it's how the stick man is represented in rock art all over the world yep <clears throat> wow this this owl thing has got my head spinning now because there's so much symbolism in the owl and so much use of owl symbolism in in uh, all over the place that wow and for those who really want to go there, here is a <laughs> yeah crop circle. It yep. is a crop circle of the owl eyes, and who's tr who's trying to tell us something? It's like the owl eyes in the sun, right? That's... I mean, look, look, look at this. Um, it, it's 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 like a pine cone or a sunflower pattern. Yep. Now, why would a pine cone or a sunflower grow the way it does? Because this is the nature of the geometry of the ether that is it's it's forming out of. And that's that's that shape right there is when I was looking down at the grass, that's what I would see was okay. just those perfect mm -hmm. sacred patterns just repeated over and over. And that's yeah. it's just so amazing to see here and tie it in together that these but you see it everywhere. It's in all creation. And we, I mean, and just that's this crop was, circle. It's you yeah. have. It's like you have the owl eyes, and you have this pattern superimposed on one. <laughs> on exactly. Yep. Wow. Now, what's the upper right picture with the the fingers and the two circles? So this is so this is how you get. This is how you derive these uh, or or generate these um, uh, these geometric patterns with the ferro cell experiment is you just apply a magnet to it. Oh, right over it. Okay, that's the magnet. Okay, yeah. yep, I see. And so this this one here where you get the owl eyes, that magnet would have been just turned on its side. So it's just, it's on the plate like this, the plate is here, 
yep. and you're getting you're getting the the toroidal mm-hmm. that way it's the yin and the yang yep yeah. the two sides of the energy field wow that's so and cool I, after I, it, 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 this is cool. this is really cool because back to my uh, visit to the uh, museum, the local museum in, in Ellensburg, I saw this pattern on the wall in, uh, in a picture, and they've actually got actual petroglyphs in there that were taken from the Columbia River Gorge. So this image here actually co- came from uh, right around me in the in the Columbia River Gorge. Oh, that's so cool! It, isn't it amazing when you find it locally? You know, you that's get the into the Oh, yeah, because you realize you're you're you know, you're you're connected to all of this directly and it's it's all around us hidden in plain sight. Yeah, that's the thing. But many are blind to it and can't see it. And that's the problem. That's that's why I do this is to try and let people see it. And hopefully we open a couple eyes. Owl eyes and other. (laughs) So this is my ode to Walter Russell and his amazing book universal one uh matt are you familiar with this book i haven't read it i know who walter russell is though it's i highly recommend it i mean just and i and i put this up here just to demonstrate that this is i i believe that this is what he was driving at you know that you you, gravitation doesn't explain the the structure of the universe but you with gravitation you need radiation you need the yin and the yang inhalation and exhalation right Cur- yep. curve curving in and, and curving out positive and negative charge so that's what we're after here male i don't intrigue. know that cosmic pendulum it kind of looks like the pedophile sign you know all those q people are going to be triggered <laughs> well <clears throat> I, I still hold to the idea that there is a, a female polarity and a male polarity. And I don't think it's controversial to suggest that humans aren't exempt, exempt from the laws of nature. No, we, we, I mean, anyone <laughs> that thinks they are is in for a rude awakening, you know? Well, yeah, that's a whole, a whole nother rabbit Whole. and uh my heart goes out to people that are really struggling with this because it and especially the youth um i think they've got the the kids young people in general just so twisted up about this and um and it's just it leads to a lot of internal uh turmoil and, and doubt and confusion and yeah and that's that's one of the reasons matthew why i love talking about the buildings with my son You know, I love showing him the old buildings and he's kind of getting into it. You know, like he likes to see in the beginning, he was just like, oh, dad, another building. And now he's like, oh, that one looks kind of like the one you showed me before. Or look at the windows on that one and things like that, because he 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 likes the the uh, stained glass windows in the cathedrals. He just thinks they're unbelievable. Yeah, it's great to share this with kids because their eyes light up. Yep. Yeah. Um, I, I took my, my middle son, Mateo, to see Graham Hancock when he spoke here in Seattle uh, about uh, three years ago. He was putting out his book, uh, America Before. Mm-hmm. Maybe it wasn't even that long. Maybe it was like two years ago. Uh, but yeah, just, you know, for, we've been talking about the pyramids for years now. <laughs> <clears throat> That's one of our favorites, it's, it's too. Drawn to this. Yeah. And the pyramids are a good one because that's one where they can they they can kind of see the the f- mysticism in it the if you want to say fantasy side of it you know the because there's been so much fantasy around egypt and the tombs like the um, pyramids so to speak um that you know they can they they can use that and then when if you can get them thinking with that side of the brain that creative side then you can start bringing them into okay well they did it in egypt mm-hmm do you think they did it any other time in history? And right. then you start seeing the wheel turn that, okay, well, yeah, maybe it is possible. Yeah. And if you listen to like what Randall Carlson says, um, he's kind of Graham Hancock's um, right-hand man there. And he, you know, he, he explains how the pyramids, the great pyramid in particular is a scale model of the earth. Yep. And I think I, that really, 
and I had to hit the pause button when I heard that because that means a lot of things. It means that it means that they knew how big the Earth is way back when, in order for it to be a scale model of the Earth, and it's it's also at the scale of forty three thousand two hundred. So you have that sacred number four three two embedded yep. in. It. Yeah, and but it's and, just a coincidence, Matthew. Come on. Uh, well, that's what the experts <laughs> you know. Say. I love those people. Ah, it's just a coincidence. Come on. Uh, that's what the experts say. Yeah. So yeah, gonna... our buddy, what is his name? Faraz Hawad or whatever. Uh, that guy oh, is yeah. the biggest He's criminal out from... there. He's, He's the a... Fauci of <laughs> Egypt. Yeah. Well. Yeah, he's a gatekeeper. So, you know, so they're out there. So we're going to do our little end run around it and do our own thing over here while they flail. <clears throat> and also, with radiation, um, you know, this again is is as above, so below. As yep. within, so without. I like that. I like that as much, uh, you know, that as within, as without. It, it, it makes more sense. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, and so just a, a quick counterpoint here, modern scientism denies the ether, confines electricity to wires fed by combustion, and claims the sun is a dangerous sort of disease. <laughs> and I ain't buying it. It's lies and deception. And, you know, what we're dealing with now with, uh, dare I say, 5G, um, we've got towers all around us, and they're rolling this stuff out real fast. It's clever how they put all these 5G towers up when we were locked down. You know, because uh, <clears throat> you know what, I want this to stay up on YouTube, but um, you know, I I won't lie, I, I feel like sometimes I can feel it. I can I feel like I've been telling my wife, I think they turned it up a notch today because I'm just out of sorts. Matthew, uh, uh, I swear, when I was living in the apartment, I have never been that inundated and and bombarded with weight with frequency in my life. Like the, the, it was just overwhelming to the point where I was getting headaches from it. It was, you know, altering my mood. Um, and then as soon as I got out of there and I got out, out here up on the mountain, it's like a whole new world. I mean, I'm yes. on a, I'm on a quartz mountain up here and. Oh, wow. The, the, there's like, you can't get Wi-Fi up here. Everything's blocked. You know, it's, <laughs> it's, it's great. I mean, from that standpoint that I go, I I walk my dog up the rest of the mountain every, every morning. And I get about a hundred yards outside my door and I have no cell service, no Wi-Fi service. It's a beautiful thing up here. And oh, I'm with you. you. I, I feel like there is, it is definitely something to it and, and you can feel it when they start tweaking it a little bit i'm with you yeah yeah and so that's that's the opposite of where we're trying to go but like that's what that's what we're up against well it's like what you talked about with, with your son's school being a faraday cage yes yeah just and just steel, blocking everything metal, out stud yep steel beams clad in metal unnatural side, yeah and stuffed full of wi-fi and they wonder why you know kids get sick yep well, so um the sacred buildings are aligned and attuned to the human form so this is i love this i love this image again not my artwork this this is attributed to dw down here hats off to you it's a it's a it's a great collage showing different sacred structures and temples and how just in, in plan they align with the human body and sacred geometry in all our proportions yes 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 it's it it's amazing and notice where are the centers of these cathedrals right in the green right in the heart right and that's where all the people would be yes right and 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 then if you look where the purples are in mm. most churches i would imagine that's where the organ would be oh interesting Right, you're going to get the the frequencies coming from the the crown, basically. Oh, and look at where the entrance is. It's like the womb, sacral. Yep. Isn't that fascinating? That is. This is. I'm with you. This is a great slide right here. This really lays it out and 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 makes you see that there is more to these cathedrals than just you know 
a, a stone building. There and is. And look at look at where they have the choir is in the throat chakra. Yep, the voice. You yes. can't make this up. This is that is wow. I've never and I just I just before when we were talking and I was scrolling through because I have pictures like this that shows the sacred geometric patterns in the different and and it had the human body and I never even put the the chakras together with the cathedral because that's that's amazing from entering in the womb area going up through the stomach wow so you're climbing the chakras as you get closer to the you know the pu- the organs Wow. That's beautiful. I mm. love it. Mm. And the Solomon's temple one is really interesting too, with the, the, the outbuilding by his yes. feet. Right. Interesting too. Yeah. yeah. Great slide. Oh, I mm. love that one. So then we were talking about uh, alchemy and, you know, so this, excuse me, this image over here on the right is from a, a book that was actually recommended by Jay Widener, um, which I picked up. It was the most expensive book I ever bought, but I'm so glad I did, uh, called Natural Architecture. And, and, and they get into the alchemy of the sacred geometry of the cathedrals. And, um, <clears throat> and apparently this, the author is like not fully understood if this was the author it was written in French it was saved as a manuscript and passed down and and somehow preserved and and then it was translated it was translated into English um but what I love about this image on the right there is that it shows it shows the two pillars of you know the alchemical uh you know as above so below the um the alchemist uh, holding the model of the cathedral and examining it as a sacred work. Yeah, that's a great, I'm, I'm just trying to look at all the intricate details. It's just such a detailed drawing too. And there's, you know, the little flags up above, you've got the stars, you've got, it looks like pine cones. I don't know what the first flag is, but then you get into the, You've got the masonry tools. They look like acorns. Yeah. So it's almost. None of this stuff is by accident. And it's all so intentional. And that's what this tells me. Um, Every piece of it is considered as a part of the whole. And again, the self-similar fractal replication of of each part relating back to the whole in this. uh, really highly charged resonant harmonic whole there's a book out there called pillars of the earth it's a novel what's the guy's name um i have it on my shelf back here i can't remember the author's name right now ken follett i believe and um he he makes a big fuss in the in the preface about how he spent i don't know 10 or 20 years traveling around to cathedrals and studying cathedrals and he really wanted to write a novel about it was based on you know the story of of how a cathedral was built and it's it's really good storytelling but how he describes the actual building of the cathedral was this really kind of cartoonish like trial and error like, well, they tried this, it didn't work, so they did something else. Well, his daughter was sitting in the in the in the in, in the structure after you know the, the shell was up, and she looked up and said, Dad, wouldn't a window look really great there? And her name was Rose, so now we call them Rose Windows. And it was just like, come on. That's like, it. I, I I've come to the point where I think cathedrals, they're first of all, they're divinely inspired. Second of all, we we have no idea what we're looking at. That's how I feel. Like whenever you see, you know, drawings, you never see like actual construction drawings. Like how the hell did these things go together? How do you how do you build a foundation and start erecting columns out of you know, I don't know, pink granite and marble that are going to hold up this crystalline edifice that's 
you know, hundreds of feet into the air with, with all of its flying buttresses, like the advanced, highly advanced engineering and architecture that goes into this, together with all of these alchemical principles and sacred geometry, it's so mind boggling. And I think I really do believe that, you know, uh, you know, we talk about like levels of consciousness, you know, we're here, we're sort of like, you know, we might be like two or three steps up from being NPC, but <laughs> we 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 had a long way to go. Like I think that these structures were built by um people with oh they're master crafts higher consciousness. Yeah. I think they had a higher consciousness. I, I agree. I think they were in at a higher frequency. They were in tune with something that we've lost connection to. Um and and I I <laughs> You know, I've been listening a lot and I keep, I sound like a broken record to the people that listen to the show, but the guys over at Operation Red Pill have been talking about the trivium and the quadrivium. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I really, the more I listen to that and the more I start thinking about it and the way they've taken geometry out of uh, education and pushing away from music and things like that, that, and the arts, you know, they've, it's... <clears throat> It's a perversion. And I, I really feel like that. Yeah, there you go. Highly recommended. So anyone that's, you know, it's, it's just, it's one of those where we have to try and find a way. And that's again, what I was talking about before my, my mission in this with the old buildings is to find that connection, right? Find out how they did it, like, or why they did it the way they did to benefit humanity. And at what point was it that they decided, okay, now we're not going to do this anymore? Yeah. Yes. And I think that we have some ideas. And we're close. Yeah. Yeah. It's like when did when they destroyed the old world. Yeah. You know, and and our modern grid. Uh, I don't know if you follow her on Instagram, but Tartar the Tartarian Talisman, she has a great little Instagram page. And she was talking about it today about you know the destruction of the old world and and why and when do you see them so fervently trying to demolish something and so quickly wipe it away mm -hmm. right and we we were passing dms back and forth because i thought this was just a great idea and concept because when i was thinking about the chicago fire before the ground you know the ash the embers were still hot they started building right away you know, there was no worry about what caused the fire. It was, nope, we got to get, we got to start rebuilding. And it's like, ah, that just doesn't <clears throat> sit with me right. Because there should have been time <clears throat> taken and consideration taken into these buildings and not just throw up anything, any structure. Well, right. Well, one thing I came across in researching the World Fair is, is that the fair builders, <clears throat> the fair developers were contracted to demolish all of the buildings that were within each of the fair grounds after the fair was over. Yep. They were actually obligated contractually to, to destroy it. Yeah. Cause I know in my Chicago research, they debated, they, you know, how they wanted it to go out. Cause they said it has to go out with the same bang that it came in with, you know, to and it's it like, like a, God, yes. guys. <laughs> yes. To seal it in our consciousness. And then, and then replace it with Disneyland and, you know, Walt Disney animations that kind of fill that void in our, in our consciousness and, and make it seem like it was all a dream. Yep. Or a fairy tale, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> so, you know, what we have in cathedrals are self-similar fractal patterns found throughout all the throughout all sacred structures really um but i think best exemplified in these cathedrals and here's some examples of exeter gloucester bath and reams <clears throat> and you know and again, it's funny funny too matthew is that you know here the all these pictures are european Right. Mm -hmm. And and when people think about these these structures, they're like, oh, yeah, they, those are those are European structures. Well, then you go over to India. You see similar structures over there. You go to China. 
you go yeah. to South America, you know, you, you go to Africa and you start yeah. seeing similar structures all over the world. And it's not just in Europe, like we're led to believe. I've got some uh, images coming up of St. Patrick's Cathedral in, in New York City. And it's yep. just, it's just like this. You know, I, 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 um, I and I've been in St. Patrick's and man, is that a beautiful cathedral? Mm -hmm. Oof. Yeah, I wish I went in it with the eyes I have now, though. Exactly. Yeah. I, speaking of that, I, I studied architecture in Newark, New Jersey, and it was a stone's throw. My architecture school, it was a stone's throw from, I believe it's Sacred Heart Cathedral. And in Newark, you can look that up. It's breathtaking. Yep. And I just, you know, I still had the blinders on. Mm -hmm. I didn't appreciate what was right there. Like, I, I really do want to go back and just spend some time because it was it's world class architecture. Yeah. And I didn't go in it once. And I'm, I'm embarrassed to say that because <laughs> hey, I was uh, still we'll... into like the Bauhaus and like Corbusier and modern architecture. I thought that was cool. <laughs> you know, little did I know. Well, field trip. Yes. <laughs> so, and, and just as in nature, self-similar fractal patterns are found throughout. Oh, this and is great. Yeah. My so if friend, you hold uh, this side by side, you know, it starts to, a picture starts to emerge of, you know, these cathedrals are built with natural uh, uh, order, natural law and a natural exquisite beauty of just the logos that comes with adhering to, um, uh, nature's principles right so we have we have um lichtenberg currents which shown in the middle here is this uh wood uh engraving technique of 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 attaching two electric uh cables to a block of wood that's you know wet with water and running a current and then it creates it creates um fractal Lichtenberg figures that look just like canyons at the macro scale. And then they make these beautiful sculptural pieces. Um, and again, thinking about the fact that <clears throat> plasma phenomena is fully scalable from the mac from the macro to the micro. You know, so you have, uh, you have crystals that self replicate and uh um there's self-similar fractal patterns in these crystals the mandelbrot set we, everybody's probably sat there with you know a video running of mandelbrot set getting dizzy but seeing these patterns repeat over and over and over again it's just a very simple equation um that derives it at this infinite uh um variation uh, fern leaves, um, ice crystals. It yeah. Just on and, on. and these, I mean, this Lichtenberg uh, pattern really gets me, man. Cause you see it. And, and when you're in the, you know, electric universe, you start listening to people. And I know, um, Arya Sulin really pushes it that you look at the grand Canyon and mm -hmm. it's essentially just a Lichtenberg pattern, you know, it's, yes. it's, it, it's fried. Yeah. And anyone that wants to see more pictures of this, uh, my uh, on Instagram, uh, Tartaria Ann had just put, I think, probably twenty pictures out there of of uh, the Lichtenberg. So, yeah, you want to well, see you, it? You in, just hover in, over the Southwest on Google Maps and and zoom in and out, and you're just going to come across one Lichtenberg pattern after another, and it, yep. and, it, and it does look like that whole region has been fried. And yeah, the whole you go, it's basically the Rockies West, you know, that whole area up and down the Rockies and around the Grand Canyon, and you go down into New Mexico and, Me and Arizona. It's all, yeah, and it's so, and what else do you see out there? It's all red, huh. right? All the land is oxidized, it's just it, it's red, it's almost like it's been burnt, like Mars, yeah, yeah, yep. uh, Valis Marineris. Uh, on Mars, it's the scar across the face of uh, Mars is a ginormous, is many times uh, the size of the Grand Canyon. And if you really look at it, it looks like a plasma thunderbolt just, just raked itself across the surface of Mars. Yep. 
And if you really, when you get into that, it's, it's fun because, you know, modern planetary astrophysicists would say that, um, they would say that that was as a result of water erosion that once, you know, when the Mars once had water, well, I'm not denying that Mars once had water, but that canyon system, fractal canyon system doesn't have outlets like the, the branches of the canyons just they, they create these Lichtenberg branches and they just end and they're not there's no outlets where the water would have gone they would have the water would just kind of fill up it would have pooled right it would have pooled yeah so 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 it suggests that maybe it's not from water erosion and and perhaps again it goes back to the myths of of the ancestors and and the idea of the thunderbolts of the gods <clears throat> and it's interesting because that the image on the bottom uh, left here of the uh, what is that? That's now oh, you stumped me. I <laughs> yeah no no I I I just watched a video of the guy making it the other day he, where he took a bunch of things and he he heated it up and put it together and and it's I can't remember what it's called but that is it's wild and my son actually has a crystal like that too it's really cool. So I'm I'm showing these images to to you know again just to really emphasize this idea that these sacred buildings are following natural patterns. Yep. Right. <clears throat> and here we have from the outside uh, the stone and metallic spires and fractal antennas found throughout sacred structures, pulling down that etheric energy. Spires, yep. Oh man. And then I, I always I also notice on a lot of these is is that they always have, you know, it's not stained glass, but that large window in the front that has a ornate geometric pattern in it, you know, the circle, which would you know, on some modern they would put like a clock in there or something, you know. You mean to, you mean Rose's window? Yeah, Rose's window in the middle. It's like, uh, it's just, it's amazing. And and so you think about it now, why would they put that there? It's not for decoration, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, the, it has to have a function. These buildings are functional. They're not, they're not, you know, just a, a plan that they put together. These, these are living, breathing structures. Yeah. So if, 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 if what I'm saying is true, that these structures are hyper-focusing these electromagnetic currents let's say right um and placing it in, in and you have on the inside you have this sort of fractal crystalline structure made of conductive materials by the way right yep heavily so, conductive and then you have by a, the way what's that heavily conductive by the way heavily conductive materials piezoelectric properties you have the pipe organ like we've discussed right in the in the head chakra Yep. Pumping this vibration through this crystalline structure. Well, that rose window placed where it is is going to act as an amplifier. Yes. Sending all of that good juju out into your community. And so here again, um, Tesla proved that electricity can be generated by connecting heaven and earth and transmitting said electrical energy over great distances wire wirelessly. So the question that we keep bumping up against is this old world technology. That is the million dollar question, isn't it? Right. I mean, cause you look at it and it's, it's not though. When we, when we look back, because looking at these old pictures and, and hearing about it, it's been around, it's been known mm -hmm. and, and Tesla wasn't, the originator of it, right? I mean, Tesla got his work from others. That's what I understand. Not so, to take anything away from him, but no. <clears throat> did he come up with all of these ideas or was he, did he comprehend all of these ideas? And, you know, and again, we, we discussed last time how, you know, all the patent offices, United States patent offices burned down twice. Twice, not in once, the, in the 1800s. twice. So who made, who designed what and who, <laughs> was lost twice over in the 1800s so yeah you know give it to tesla or what yeah. have you 
Well, and that and we see that pattern over and over again, right? They they have a character, so to speak, that they assign all of these roles to. Yeah. Um and and it, it repeats throughout history. Same with the architects. I would I would love to do a, a podcast with you where we just talk about the made up architects. And oh, we'll just I would go love, around and I I've been looking into like Burnham and Root. Yes. From Chicago cuz those guys just built everything you know yes. every park in america every building you know they built thousands of buildings well it's olmstead like, gets every park and he was that's uh, it olmstead journalist yep. <laughs> yeah and that's what well burnham burnham uh, wasn't even an architect like and then all of a sudden he's credited with building a mansion for like the richest guy in chicago and then marries yeah. his daughter and we talked about how uh paxton was uh He's attributed to all the um, the Crystal Palaces, and he was the gardener. He's gardener. Yeah, yeah. But he 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 designed in what two weeks? Right. The, yeah. uh, the London Crystal Palace. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he de designed it in two weeks, and they built it in eight months. So, so we think that they knew how to channel etheric energy. That's what we think. Well, and th that's interesting too because. I've seen and I've heard people talk about that they there were cell phones back in the day. Yeah, I've seen well, I've seen the pictures of the um, the two women next to the fire hydrant. They were connecting that coil. Yeah. And, yeah. Back in 1900. Or so. Yeah. So, I mean, it, who's I mean, who's to say that this isn't that this isn't just a, a found technology? And I, I think that's what all this is. I think, you know, in this realm that we're in everything's been created already we're just recreating it yeah i think we're in a process of rediscovery um yep. I, I i put this picture of the fresnel lens up here because i just these are these are just mind-bending um they're, they're they're sculptures they're just this like wizardry of engineering they're marvels i was in a i was in lisbon portugal for my brother's wedding a few years ago and they have a fresnel lens museum right there in lisbon and i i spent a few hours in there and just just blew my mind now what's the story behind the lens because I, uh, I it's been a mystery to me yeah well there again it's like one of those things that are supposed to have been invented i i can't remember exactly the, i'd have to look it up sometime in the 1800s but it's just the 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 ability of a Fresnel lens to to throw light over great distances. I think that takes a profound understanding of the nature of light, and not seeing it as you know again like modern science looks at light as a as particles, you know, going from point A to point B through empty space, as opposed to um, you know what the what the, the plasma of physics point to that light is a perturbation of the ether mm -hmm. right and there is a point source and can again going back to the idea of the zero point but that um but that light as we perceive it is really illumination and the yeah, source and of light hmm? it seems like that i mean that is is like one of those concepts that you, you know you would almost see it like the colossus of rome of Rhodes, you know one of these massive lighthouses and and when you think about it and you hear about the old lighthouses there you know there's talk of red mercury being involved mm -hmm. and things like that that would help with with some of these processes and some of this illumination and such but yeah that's it's another one that's a mystery to me because I, I don't see all these lighthouses just strictly being a beacon of light for approaching ships. Well, not only not only that, like the actual lighthouses themselves, there's there's um <clears throat> I, have, I have to find the pictures that I took of a lighthouse out in Fort uh Fort so and so on the on the uh, Olympic Peninsula up near Port Townsend. And I just went on a little side trip, wasn't expecting to come across old world architecture, but I saw this. You know, I mean, it looked like this lighthouse was built with megalithic blocks that were just finely carved and just like perfectly laid into place. And this is a relatively remote location out on the peninsula, you know, and 
pretty pretty rough weather conditions and all and it's it you know and again it begs the question like who who really did build this and when yeah you know the, and, who when is is the key like because that's that's where the mystery is and all these you know all those those big stones who quarried the stones where they yes. come from you know yeah. that's those are all the questions that you're probably not going to get answers to yeah and that's the part that's frustrating because if we had the answers you know we can reverse engineer you know we can go yeah. back to the source and start checking it out but with and, no information or the narrative that they give you where they just attribute it to you know john smith who also invented a b and c we're you know a dog chasing its tail because you're in that never-ending loop that you you're not going to get to the bottom of it and here's the thing that gets me mad is let's say we're just batshit crazy right quite possible we're yeah we're we're <laughs> we're, we're bored we've done too many mushrooms whatever we're just like off on this crazy tangent and all of these buildings that to us look like old world structures all across this country much of which was burned down or torn down deliberately that has all of these exquisite properties that we can't do anymore and all this kind of stuff if it's true that all of it was built as they say it was then this nation had a a renaissance of breathtaking proportions that lasted for about 20, maybe 30 years. Yep. Where we built the most extraordinary structures all over the place in the most remote locations without, you know, barely the infrastructure there to get, you know, just to get from point A to point B. And with the most rudimentary tools. Yep. Yep. While people were trying to figure out how to just eat, you know, scratch a, a living out of the soil. Or, yeah, if or anybody's wondering about farm. this, go check out old Utah. That's yes. a mind mind blowing idea. You know, all those yeah, Mormon... Salt Lake City. I, yep. And so, so if we're if we're completely off the rails, and 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 the <laughs> you know the the Wikipedia narrative is true, or the narrative as distilled through Wikipedia. Then what happened? What happened? What happened to this renaissance? What that should be like our great grandfathers and you know that that built all this stuff and and we should be celebrating this. It should be in all of our stories. It should be yep. in all of our movies. It should be in all our, all of our literature and all of our um, you know the legends and myths of our of our time. We should have we should be intimately familiar with this stuff. So where did everybody go? Where where do all the stories go? Where do all well, the instead go? instead who do we get? We get J.P. Morgan. We get the Rockefellers. We get these people, you know, Carnegies. These are the characters that they feed us. Yes, as to the you know responsible for all of this. <clears throat> and 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 worse yet, they label it Gilded Age and get us to hate it and look at it with disdain, which is what happened to me as an architecture student. I would look at this stuff. And now I think back, if I had this kind of like tug of war going on, on inside of myself, I'd look at it and be like, damn, that's really beautiful. And be like, oh, but it's the capitalists. Yep. <laughs> it, it's bad. And so what if they tear it down? Right. Yeah, there's such a there's such a dichotomy to that, you know, that you're like, oh, on one side, I yeah, it's, fuck the capitalists, you know. But at the other hand, it's like, maybe did they even build this? Or are they, they just claiming it? it? Yeah, did they found and if, it. And if they and it's much more interesting uh, to look at it as old world, as part of as part of another iteration of, of whatever civilization was here before it was uh, seized upon. Yeah. And I, I, I tend to lean on, you know, if things were reset, right, you're going to build on what was previously there or yeah. use what was previously there first and mm -hmm. then adapt it to what, you know, mm -hmm. and, and that's, you know, for people just to, to completely, blow off the idea that there was there have been resets over time and that you know things have been manipulated over time and that there have been essentially you know it, the slate's been blanked 
in 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 certain areas and and you can rebuild and we've seen that throughout the 1800s with the fires and that's recent history we're not even going back into ancient history we're just staying in the modern times and you see it now magnify that or multiply that for thousands and thousands of years how many times could it have happened how many resets have we been involved in and we just really don't know Right. And, you know, Plato talked about civilization being cyclical. You know, we we are trained to think that it's linear and that we're we're the cat's meow and, the you know, the latest and greatest and everything was leading up to, you know, our iPhone in our pocket. Um, and, I, and I understand it's, you know, for many and, you know, even for myself in the beginning, you know, it seemed to bridge too far to think, well, all the textbooks are wrong. And I, all right, fuck the textbooks, because <laughs> whatever about school, but all the you know, the literature is wrong and, 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 you know, the, the, basically the historical record and, and what, how could, how could there be such a sense of like a collective amnesia that there's just no recollection of it? Well, then you get into, you know, these palatial orphanages and insane asylums all across the landscape, you know, these remote, remote locations where there's sprawling palaces with exquisite architecture that are stuffed full of crazy people where all the crazy people come from and then you get into the orphanage orphan trains you know that were redistributing (laughs) children across the landscape to any farmer that would take them and what was going on there and the the baby incubator babies right incubator babies at world fairs (laughs) um it gets strange it gets in 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 it you know as we discussed a little bit last time it, it can be a little dark and it's unsettling you know and, and, you, and sometimes you just have to take it in in um digestible bites yeah and that's the thing because if you present the whole story as you know we start seeing it unravel that's when you get oh you're just crazy that's just totally insane but when you start piecing together asylums and orphanages and world fairs where these folks would learn the ways that they're going to have to live going forward, it doesn't seem so crazy. And that when you start talking or, or looking at firsthand accounts of people at the fairs and saying that, yeah, they walked around like they were under a spell. Right. Well, that's because they probably ha- have no clue where they are, or what they're doing here. That's because they're under a spell. Yeah. So they're yeah. so disoriented that, you know, you've just taken, it's like taking us and dropping us in the middle of the desert or the rainforest and saying, yeah, yeah good luck. Yeah. And you're like, oh, you're looking around like, oh shit, what do I do? Like, I don't know what's poisonous, what's not, I don't know what's going to kill me, what's not. Yeah. I'm, I don't know yeah. what's going on here. It's going to take you a while. We're all under a spell. We're, yep. we're all completely under a spell. And, and not only that, it's like, how do you, <laughs> How do you tell somebody that's like maybe living in the suburbs that, hey, do you know that there was like a star for it here before? It's like, well, it's not here now. You know, I, yeah. got, I got shit to do. Yeah. You know. Oh, that reminds me. After this, we get through this presentation. I do want to show you pictures if we can find pictures of old Newark, because that city is really, you know, it's near and dear to my heart. I spent a lot of time there. I grew up there. I studied architecture there. I, I grew up outside of it, but I lived for a bunch of years in Newark. As an architecture student, again, I had no idea. The old world buildings at Broad and Market that were torn down a few decades ago are mind bending. They're so beautiful and exquisite. And I had no idea. I had no idea that they were there. So I, w- I want to share those with you after we get I'd to love them. to see them. Okay. So speaking of Rose's Windows. They're masterpieces of cymatic design identified with cathedrals all around the world. And again, my contention as the, is that these lovely devices are devices and, and they're acting as amplifiers for all of that energy that is being you know, gathered and, and channeled by the, by the cathedral itself. And... Um, <clears throat> We have, I put this image here because this idea has been floating around, um, hearkening back to Iwar's videos of the, of the magnetron or or showing the magnetron and how just by the geometry 
of this device, and in this case, a spinning cathode at the center of it. Remember, we talked about the cathode and the anode. Well, when yep. this spins, and this is still, just by the way of this uh, self-similar fractal geometry going around the inside of the circle, it generates charge. This is generating charge. These exist inside of every microwave. Yep. Right? And so it's just fascinating. And this is why I reject Ewar's rejection of his own work in, in, in total, because this, he was onto something with this, or at least that video was whoever. Well, it's funny you say that too, because I, I had a, I had a, you know, a clip of his queued up for this <laughs> just on exactly this, the rose windows and them being amplifiers. And I was mm -hmm. like, you know, I'm going to keep throwing it out there because he put it out there. And I think it has some credence to it, even though he's going to poo poo it away and say, oh, no, I was under a spell when I created that those 20 hours of documentaries. Can I speak freely on your podcast? Are you Matt? kidding me? Of course, this is this is it. I, I, I think. Um, Ewar, whoever Ewar is in. We don't know who he is, and that's fine. That's fine if he doesn't want to divulge his, his name. I think he's a narrator. I think he's a narrator, and there was a team that made those videos. And then I don't know what happened if somebody decided that genie needed to be, the genie needed to be stuffed back into the bottle or what. But the, 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 re, the, the recantation of the work does not match the sophistication of the work itself. And that to me is a dead giveaway that he didn't, he's not the guy that actually came up with those ideas. Correct. He might be into him, but I think he's the narrator. I'm with you a hundred percent. And not one person, one person cannot put together all the, all that video. Also, it's That's a lot of work. I not took, happening. I mean, for me to put together my, you know, you're doing it right here. This little, 15 slide presentation how many hours you put into this you it's know it's taken me days and days yeah and it would it would probably work out to maybe an hour and a half of you know you just talking to it mm -hmm. and it's like okay now mag multiply that by 10 15 and now you're getting to what he did it's like yeah i'm with you because either you didn't do the research and you just narrated it or you did the the research and now you're just totally denying it which yeah. And, and, and his comebacks now, listen, I respect the work that they're doing because they are going back and digging through the old truth and they're proving their side of what they're trying to show, but they're using examples that are modern. So, I mean, yeah, you can do it modern and, and granted they could do things that were great back then too. You can't just throw the baby out with no, the bathwater. It's, it's a, it's like a little bit of a bait and switch yes. going on there. Yeah, and the whole flip flop productions that he works for now, it's like, come on, man. Like just stop. <laughs> I get it. And and to 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 go so hard at us now. Like yeah. he's going uh, autodidactic is like his number one target. And they just love him and Wooden Nichols just tear up autodidactic all the time. Well, and they they're a little bit of an easy target because they go hard, they lean hard into the Tartaria. Thing. heavy and so that you know it's kind of like you know you you find the weakest link and just you know use that use that to frame the entire field yep. of researchers and that's that's disingenuous exactly and that's my problem with it is that now it's turned into a tit for tat you know and they've both got distracted go trying to go at each other instead of doing the work which by the way is just what they want Mm -hmm. they That's don't want us want. researching this stuff they don't want us working together they want us in fighting they yeah. want us to get off the track because i really feel like we're getting closer than we've ever gotten yeah, i do too. i do too i think we're over the target and um um you know and again it's just like this is there's a large body of very um intelligent earnest uh, heartfelt creative researchers that are coming at this from so many different angles yep. um, that it's just beyond it's out, you know, the, the genie is out of the bottle and um, it's not going to be stuffed back in. And there's just too many people looking. There's too many eyes on it right now. 
Um, you know, for myself, I like the term old world. I think, you know, you and I are simpatico on that because I don't, I don't, I avoid Tartaria just because I don't know. I don't know if it was Tartaria. I like to think it was American. At least I have found looking at zero, here. Matthew. I've read probably a dozen books pre 1900 on Tartari, on, you know, Tartary and Tartarians and Grand Tartary. And there's nothing there. There's nothing there. The Mongol Empire, man, let's give them credit for what they were. And I've, I've been going back and forth with my buddy, um, Dustin, who does, uh, he does bushwhacking Buffalo on YouTube. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of boots on the ground in Buffalo there does great work. And we've been going back and forth on this because I'm, I'm done. You know, I, I can't, I can't deal with it anymore with the, the fact that it's just like, the Mongols aren't getting any credit anymore. It's all Tartarian. Mm-hmm. And it's like, guys, you got to give the Mongols credit. They went from, you know, Eastern Russia, China, all the way through the Middle East and conquered anything and everything in their path. And we're just going to overwrite it with Tartaria. So isn't that what a red herring is? Yes. Like you, you're just creating this artificial construct that is easy to knock down. Yep. And that's exactly it. Whereas, <clears throat> like I said, you, you and you said it great on Mark's show. On uh, you, and, and anybody that hasn't listened to that, by the way, go listen to my family thinks I'm crazy that Matthew did because he did a great job over there too. But they talked about the it's the T word, you know. And I call them tartards now because people are so like want to cling to this. Now, hey, I got no problem if you're researching what we're researching and and just using that because you want to bring people in. Fine, so be it. But if you're still clinging to this Tartarian civilization, I'm not buying it all the way. Like yeah. y- there has to be some evidence and I have zero evidence that I've seen. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, because I was looking for it. Right. I mean, <clears throat> in the beginning, I was like, oh, this would be great. You know, a worldwide civilization. Now, am I am I discounting the fact that the world was connected, interconnected at some point? No. Right. Right. I think we I absolutely it was. Right. But was it this under this Tartarian umbrella? Absolutely. Yeah, describing not. it to Tartaria, it's it I think it's a distraction. Um yep. so and thanks for your um your pitch for um my podcast with uh Mystic Mark on uh, my family thinks I'm crazy. But a disclaimer about that, it was my first podcast and I was I was as nervous as all get out. So I stumbled through a few things on that. Um, but hey, we've been you there, go. you know, and I've, I've done it too, where you get in, in there and you're like, okay, I got, got all these things I want to talk about. And then afterwards they stop recording. You're like, wait, 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 I want to do this, this, and this. I forgot to talk <laughs> about this. And it's like, oh, can we do a mall again? Yeah. But listen, <laughs> you, you dropped so much information on there. No one's going to notice. And you're just going to keep, making appearances on people's pods so it's only going to get better and and from what i've got and feedback on our first one it's one to one and looking at the numbers it's just climbing faster than any of the other recent podcasts i've done well, that's cool yeah and you know this information it's it's getting out there and it, it's great to be it's great to be part of it um I've yeah because been, we're um... presenting it genuinely <laughs> matthew and and researched right mm-hmm. we're not just making these off the cuff claims and you know doing some half-assed google searches on this stuff yeah. i mean um matt I've, i'm 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 a trained architect and and you know i've been doing architecture for over 20 years i've been building my whole life yep. um when i look at these old world buildings and and people just say oh you know that was you know or like the world fair is like oh yeah that was just like plaster and staff or staff and and and, and bubble gum and duct tape and it's just <laughs> like no you don't know you know you you have to you if you have a little building experience you can have a greater appreciation of what you're looking at and even if they were just models let's say they were for instance full scale models because that's what they'd be yep you're not going to do that in the amount of time that they said so nope they um the the Qatar uh, the Qatar World Cup my kid was showing me um a video of the of the uh, stadiums they built eight stadiums okay eight buildings right for Qatar it took them 12 years and and by the way to build eight 
stadium buildings. Yeah, and by the way, one of those stadiums, okay, could it probably holds around a hundred thousand if it's a modern stadium. Right. In Chicago, one of the buildings could hold three hundred thousand people. I believe it was the manufacturer hall. It was, yeah. Something yep. like a, a fourteen acres or something like that. Yeah. I mean, these are monumental structures. So okay, let's say there are full scale models built out of you know we're doing packing. this in 2020 to you know or 2010 they started Qatar. You know, right. if they're getting ready for 2022, 12 years with modern top the of the line technology, right? Building technology and equipment available. Yep. Resources, materials, everything. Yeah. Endless yep. streams of immigrant labor, um, which is itself a sad story about that well slave labor over there <clears throat> yeah so so here we are just trying to get through a slideshow <laughs> so you know looking at rose windows and again where do we see this kind of thing in nature and it's just like uh, the flower this, of life is this the is where you got me this geometry. is dr emoto <laughs> oh yes i love it go on yes so so Again, just re-emphasizing the the case that these sacred structures are following nature's rules, following na natural principles and natural order. You know, and you can you can come up with all of the platonic solids starting with a single point, and I just love that. I love that idea. You start with a point, and that's the void, and then you 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 go out equidistant from there, and you get a circle, and you overlap the centers of two circles and you get the vesica pisces and it just goes on and on and in in in, in self-similar uh fractal replication you end up with the seed of life the flower of life and before you know it you have um it's uh <clears throat> metatron's cube yep and from there the geometry it goes it jumps from two dimensional to three dimensions it jumps off the page. Literally, it it, it it extrudes, and this is the beauty of the um the of the uh platonic solids, in addition that in addition to the fact that they all fit within a sphere where the, the vertices all touch the edge of the sphere, they have that in common, but how they all are just extruded from intersecting lines on this Metatron cube, which comes from the fruit of life. Uh, um, uh, connecting the centers of the of the fruit of life shapes, which is also the pattern that we see in our star forts, which is the patterns that we see in sacred structures across the realm, all across. Yep, it's the basis for it at, re at least, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is the foundation, and when you start, it's like. You know, I remember when I was studying in architecture school, and you'd take you'd take your. Um, your architecture studio class, spend all your time there. <clears throat> it's you're trying to come up with a concept for a, a project or a model. And like, you know, students would come in with all sorts of wild things. And be, you know, we're, we're our, in a sense, like our minds were in a, I want to say, I wanted to say polluted, but, but really it's just like, um, like overloaded with, with, with what is presented as like the, the the cutting edges of architecture of this with this deconstructivist stuff and you know you go from modern modern architecture in 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 our modern epoch go from modern architecture with all its brutalism to this um postmodernism with all its like you know anything goes pulling elements from from everywhere and just mashing them together into whatever uh philip johnson type stuff and 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 then you and then you get into the deconstructivist stuff which is just like a it's like the end and you know so and so you get a um what's his name uh um peter eisenman oh this guy he's like he's like <laughs> like the wannabe granddaddy of deconstructivist architect although he hasn't really built much his his um conceptual work has been hugely influential and it's just it's like this dis distorted um um dissonant 
type of um it's a, it's the antithesis of everything that we're talking about here um um, um <clears throat> these types of buildings are well you see them here in seattle it's like the, the Liebitzkin building which is the um uh it's like that right Liebitzkin. um uh the seattle the seattle library and it's just disjointed and this and that it's kind of a mild version of it um all the way up to you know like the holocaust museums and they're intentionally designed to create disharmony within the human spirit right you find that in in, in contemporary public uh sculptures that are put into you know town squares and cities all in europe and the united states these really kind of like jaggedy dis you know just dejected looking sculptures and to me that again this is all part of the programming yep you know and so you're getting you're getting all this like input as an architecture student you come into studio and it's like you know where do i begin it's like well you know this crumpled up tinfoil you know this is <laughs> the this is the, the the inspiration and 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 then i'm gonna like you know build a hospital around this and this is this is what students are getting this is the way their minds are being formed in architecture uh, uh, universities, uh, all over the place. And I, I, now I find that to be such a shame because, because something as simple as, you know, starting with the flower of life, it's such a simple concept, easy to learn lifetime to master. You get infinite variety, the infinite variety of nature out of this, like out of a point in a circle. It's how profound is that? Yeah, and going back to what we talked about before, it goes back to the math, right? And them and them changing that in, in common core math, getting away mm. from what's natural and giving yeah. you this thing to just disorient and take you away from the natural way of, of things, of operations. Yes. Unbelievable. Yeah. yeah it's I I get it. I, I really believe in this because of the you know, you look into Dr. Emoto's studies and you just think about in general, mm -hmm. negative, negative thoughts, negative words. It has an impact. Yes. Positivity, positive thoughts, positive words. They have an impact on you. And that's true with everything. And we found that it's true with water. It's true with plants. It, it's, mm -hmm. it's been proven time and time again that our words are is it's it's vibrations coming out of our mouth it's frequency coming out of our mouth that you know produces these sounds and it has an impact on everything around us yes and water does have memory yes <clears throat> and it's and how does water have memory um it's the resonance of the vibration positive or negative vibration that's <clears throat> being sent to the water that's then frozen and and the crystals of which are photographed by um dr uh emoto did you say yes yeah i just couldn't remember the name right um yeah and proving th through experimentation that that you know anybody can do where by sending negative uh thoughts and feelings just thoughts and feelings to water uh, will negative ones will create really you know dissonant looking crystals Positive, loving emotions will create beautiful, exquisite crystals. Um, and again, going back to Ken Ken Wheeler, he talks about the why, which is the H two O molecule. Um, the, the 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 memory is held in the space between the 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 atoms. It creates a perfect um the, the the molecule creates a perfect 108 degree triangle which when you break it down and you know strike your um i forget the i forget my trigonometry right now the line from the from the apex down to the bottom um you create a um it, 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 in, I would just put it this way, simply embedded in the geometry of the water molecule is a uh, perfect representation of, of phi, of the, the Fibonacci golden ratio. And so it's a perfect antenna for, 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 to carry harmonics, to carry, to carry memory, to carry, uh, 
a, 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 a resonant um, vibration, right? Which I guess is when you get down to it is what memory is in some yep. way. Yeah, right. I mean, that's what we're learning. It, it seems to be, and 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 the crystalline structures are just amazing in the water as mm -hmm. you see the different. Um, you know, like you were saying, different words, different emotions that we put into this. It's it's just, it's a phenomenal study. So anybody that hasn't checked it out, uh, and Dr. Moto is not the only guy that's done it. There's a lot of people that have done it. And you can you can look at it different ways too. You can look at it not only in the water, but you can look at it when um, they play church bells. Um, and you can look at the effect that that has on water. You can look at the the organs and, and they all tend to have a positive effect on the body. Yeah. And speaking of organs. Yes. Look at these beasts. Pipe organs are marvels of instrumentation, sending sonic vibrations throughout cathedrals with the rose windows acting as amplifiers. Because mm -hmm. what and did we see before? Before we saw <clears throat> that the organ is on one end, and the mm -hmm. rose window is on the other. And as it yes. travels down, it's going to amplify. Yeah. Yes. And and the size, the sheer size of these organs. You know, most people have gone to their local church and they've seen a church organ, you know, a normal size one. These things, some of the pipes are up to like 100 feet long. I've heard or read that some of these create up to 40,000 tones wow. and some of which are inaudible to the human ear. Why would you go through all that trouble and expense and cost and labor and everything to create tones that are inaudible if it wasn't, if there wasn't some other purpose behind that? Yeah, that's interesting. And in, well, an interesting story about organs too, with the the St. Louis Fair and uh, St. Louis World Fair in 1904, they had a huge organ brought in from California for the fair. And the maker of the organ went bankrupt making that organ for the fair. So they made the organ for the fair, gave it to the fair, and then went bankrupt and went out of business. So, <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Very interesting. It gets curiouser and curiouser. Yep. Well, so what did Tesla say? If we want to understand the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. Yep. Right? And so here again, here, cymatic patterns are generated by planets, which is shown on the left, by musical notes in the center there, and even cross-section of DNA. We see cymatic patterns everywhere in nature that, coincidentally or not, look an awful lot like rose windows. Yeah. And then as a bonus, the harmonic vibrating labyrinths on the floors of cathedral are, are a wonder to behold. Yeah, and you see those, those resemble computer pieces, right? Mm -hmm. They, they Circuits. Uh... They're circuits. They are a full circuit. Yep. Yeah. 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 I mean, and you I, look I, at, and you look at the this. ones in the middle, you know, uh, like if you go in the middle row, the second one down, the fourth one down, those have a very Mayan feel to them. I was going to you know? say, so yeah, I, I buy the story, the idea that, you know, these represent the journey for those who can't go and actually do a pilgrimage that they'll walk the labyrinth and that's a meditation and it takes into a very completely that, that I, and I, and I love that idea. Um, but also, like you said, they, they look a lot like, you know, patterns that'll show up in, in Mayan, um, uh, in, in, um, S South American native and, and, um, uh, artwork in, and my work with uh, ayahuasca, uh, the Shipibo tradition, they they weave these extraordinary um, um, patterns, colorful patterns that they wear during ceremonies um, that look an awful lot like some of these ones in the center. Uh, the more sort of rectilinear patterns there. So 
you know, when I close my eyes during an, an ayahuasca ceremony, this is kind of not unlike what I'll see. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I either see something like this or something like the flower of life are mm -hmm. the patterns that tend to prevail. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I've had experiences uh, during ayahuasca where um, I could kind of see myself floating through the interior of cathedrals and just seeing all this sort of like crystalline forms. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> oh, those buildings, man. <clears throat> Here's uh oh, here we our, go. Our forts. <laughs> so once upon a time, cities, entire cities were cymatic. And isn't that just mind-boggling? Isn't that just breathtaking to think that the old city states that like in our sort of like popular imagination were just like these feuding um fiefdoms with their you know their 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 local um monarch and you know all the kind of like negative connotation that goes along with it and it's just when you actually step back and look at the inception of 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 many many cities throughout europe and and, and elsewhere again this city this book that we we've been looking at cities of the world um one after another after another and you realize that holy smokes these were the, the the original layout of these cities was as as like somatic forms mm -hmm. with often a cathedral at the center of it and water running as a current through through it and under it bringing you know and running water we know creates electrical current so it's just again and again this idea that old world the old world uh uh structures from from this from the smallest aspect to to the actual layout of the city himself had had these um natural patterns that really really look like they're channeling electromagnetic energy yeah and and if it wasn't a cathedral in the center it was usually a water tower mm -hmm. right and and so again when we look at conductivity and we mm -hmm. it's it all falls right into line yes beautiful and this has been this has been one of ewar's recent attacks is star forts because he found some recent examples of people redoing them like Bortrange in uh the netherlands they redid it in 19 from 1960 to like 1980 and it didn't and, turn on it was well, of course not <laughs> <laughs> well you gotta believe but they you know and that's why and he's like yeah well yeah they built it i'm like yeah i get that they didn't it's 1960 Okay, we're talking about 1500s and earlier, if you go in that Cities of the World book, because that's from what, 1570 to 16 something? Yes. So now I yeah. like what you have here, old Dresden. This is, yeah. this is one that's a tragedy. So I just wanted to, I wanted to kind of like wrap this up. There's a couple more slides, but wrapping it up, I, I, I just wanted to take a moment and, 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 you know, remember what it was like to live in an old world city that was intact. And yeah, Dresden's uh, uh, tragic that they just w laid waste to this. And it just, it's one example of, unfortunately, a great many, including, I believe, Hiroshima and Nagasaki, were not, had no military significance, but they were also old world cities. And um, I, you know, in, in researching this little aspect of the presentation, I was trying to decide, you know, what city, what city did I want to show uh, that really exemplified this old world um, organization? And of course, Dresden, uh, you know, stood out and I was happy I found these old postcards. Um, but what also struck me was finding out that first Br great britain bombed you know a, a, an old world city of germany and then germany went and bombed an old world city of london and they just went back and forth and back and forth tit for tat not attacking military targets but attacking their their each other's heritage 
So, Matthew, that's Old World Nagasaki. Oh, look at that. Yeah. So I found it in this this book. Another, it's Cities of Our World, but this is by Peter Whitfeld. Okay. So it's a, a little bit, I can't see it, damn it. But yeah. You got to hold it in front of you. I found out that. If you hold it right in front of you, the camera will pick it ah, up. Ah, there we go. Okay. So yeah, this is city uh, Cities <laughs> of the World. Another one that's worth getting into. This has, you know, I think it's like 50 or 75 old cities that it goes into. And like you said, when... When I saw Nagasaki in there, I was like, oh, now I know why they bombed it. That's what they were doing. They were they were going tit for tat and attacking each other's um their heritage centers. Yeah, because they would have went for Tokyo. All right. I mean, Tokyo's the spot you're going for. Yeah. To to where you have to zoom out and wonder out loud if that wasn't at least, you know, in some measure the point yep yep just like dresden you're absolutely right so <clears throat> i would be remiss if i didn't just take a moment again and really emphasize that this isn't just european it's not just western this is ubiquitous these sacred temples are around the world with so many different, you know, local particular cultural expressions are exhibiting so many of these, um, of these natural patterns that we've seen in the cathedrals, um, channeling energy, elevating the human mind, human body, the human spirit, lifting us up into a higher state of consciousness and connecting us with the divine, each in their own place, in their own way. I think that's a great day, point right there. The the disconnection from the divine. That's That's a huge part in this whole last, 200 years of our history yes separating spirit spirituality from science was one of the worst tricks that they played on us yep because it's a false dichotomy and hey i'm a team player the west to me is still the best <laughs> team euro <laughs> And that's that's, that, that's what drives me, you know, nuts about our education system <clears throat> is that we are taught such a Eurocentric system that, you know, it was basically just Greece and Rome. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, we went on to the next and it's like nothing was going on in India or China, really. You know, China had some some stuff going on, but ah, you don't really need to know about that. In Japan, no, there was nothing in Japan. There was nothing in Southeast Asia or Africa or latin america south america even just well, north america now it was europe and then they decided to come over here and grace us with their presence and build out everything over here my wife is from buenos aires in argentina and i've been down there half a dozen times and you want you want to take a field trip man and get your mind blown because a lot of the a lot of the old world architecture is still intact there yep same with Brazil. I, yes. I have a uh, I have a uh one of my son's friends' parents owns a co coffee business and he goes down to Brazil all the time. I'm like, "Hey, did you ever go check out any old buildings down there?" He's like, "What are you talking about?" <laughs> so I showed him a couple pictures from uh our Cities of the Maps books and stuff like that and he's like, "No." I'm like, "We'll do it and take pictures yeah. and bring go it back it to out. me." And he's mm -hmm. like, oh, next time I'm going down there, he's like, and because his wife even said, because she's from <clears throat> Brazil, and she said, yeah, oh, yeah, we have all sorts of old buildings down there. Yeah. Yeah. There's parts of Buenos Aires that look like what's, you know, the world's fair behind you. It, it's just. Well, and what's interesting about Argentina so is, right, that's where the Nazis went after well, World War II. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, that's a sordid tale in itself. But yes, they did. Um 
Yeah, it's the most European. Argentina is the most European of the South American nations. Um, well, um, Matt, that's my presentation. We got Excellent. through it. I, I, hey, that is exactly what I think people want to see because you broke it down in such a knowledgeable yet simplistic view. You know, this guy... I still, I've been looking at this stuff for probably two years, you know, it's a drop in the bucket compared to what you've been doing, but to start seeing this and, and making it simple for people is what we need because this is a very, very deep concept, a very hard concept to understand if you're not familiar with it. And, and it's easy to just write off right away because it sounds out yes. there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of it does sound uh, very woo-woo. And, and you know, there's a lot of cul-de-sacs in this research uh, pursuit, right? There's a lot of, like we were talking about, the Tartarian distraction. And, you know, you, you get into all sorts of um, weird stuff when you start looking into these things. And maybe, you know, maybe that's, you know, at least a little bit the point of, like, why – you know why certain things are promoted and pumped and by the algorithms and stuff and but my you know my um sort of bumper rails you know my guide in approaching this work is is stones don't lie yep you know like you can point all day long to to you know the literature or to textbooks or you know to expert opinion um but stones don't lie, you know, no. and I can walk down to downtown Seattle and see, you know, compare what I see with what, with what the, you know, the, the history books say went on and I can go take a tour of the underground and they read, you know, listen to the explanations of how they raised the city after the fire, after they rebuilt it. And then they raised it again. And, you know, it's just like starts, you know, I can just kind of put it side by side and just, Look at what I, you know, my, my eyes don't lie and yeah. I believe them. I believe what I see and I can put my hands on. So that's been a really kind of helpful way to approach it for me. It keeps me, it keeps me, um, it keeps me honest <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> it keeps me from straying too far into the weeds. Yeah. And it's difficult, right? Cause we want, I, I truly want to believe the fantastical, right? Mm -hmm. I, I just, it's fun. Deep down inside, it's like that kid in me wants to believe in 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 the fairy tale, you know, that they but in in there's a part of me, though, using my better judgment that still believes in more. Right. Yeah. That be believes that there is stuff that's been hidden. And, and the research that we're doing is is slowly chipping away at that to prove that we're not crazy and that we're not just shooting off the cuff with this stuff, that it's verifiable. Yeah. And the truth really is stranger than fiction when it comes. Yes, to without stuff. a doubt. And they've they programmed us to believe the opposite, that that the the strange is just the movies. It's just on TV. It's just in the black box. It's not in reality. Yeah. Now, now, Matt, I promised you some pictures of old, old world Newark. Yes. Um, why don't you, why don't you type in old, old world Newark buildings and see what comes up? All right. Since you got the controls. All right. Let's see what we get for Newark here. I stopped sharing the screen, right? Yes. Excellent. Oops. All right, here we go. All right, so what are we pulling up here? We've got the Prudential there. Building. Click on that one. Look at that thing. Wow. What? <laughs> ah, it took me to Reddit. Damn it. Let me see. Wow. Look at that castle. I had no idea. Oh my. I had no idea. God. That That's the Prudential building. <clears throat> That's what they say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I mean, you look at that thing and look at the size. The scope of it. 
yeah, the scale of it. I mean, that's just breathtaking. For anybody that's just listening, I mean, this this is a monstrosity. This thing is, it looks like it's a castle. A, it's a castle skyscraper. Yeah, yeah, that's that, that's that's a great description. Uh, all right, let's see what else we can find here. What do we got? Do 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 do. I found my collection. If you if I could share a screen again, yeah, go right ahead here because I'm I'm coming up empty. I went to Google. I was just stupid. So share screen and wham, does that work? It's coming. Yep, we're good. Oh, look at this. So that's the one we just looked at. Okay. This gem is on Broad and Market. Now, this blew my mind because I've been on Broad and Market many times, and there was no trace of this sucker. Yeah. I mean, you even the intricate detail on the roof. Yeah. With the statue it's they put up there and the, the little spires they have. Yeah, all this like antiquity type you yeah. know, railing work on the roof. Let's see. These old post postcards are fantastic, aren't they? Here again, this is Broad Street. And it's just like one after another. Yep. Yeah, just look down the row. It's just a row of beautiful old buildings. And oh, by the way, uh, the trolley system. There's no wires. No wires. Amazing how that works. Look at all these old buildings. It, it's stunning. This one is still here, the Lackawanna Station. Fortunately, some of, not all of them were torn down. Post office. High, high school. school. High right? school. Right? That's what you do when you build a that's what That's what Michelle Gibson talks about all the time, is that, you know, especially down in like Texas, they have these huge old world high schools yeah have you seen pictures of old galveston yes it's just like this before the hurricane yeah yeah look at that wow life insurance yeah now okay. this is here this is the essex county courthouse that one's still there um <clears throat> red brick city hall now, this city hall, now, I have to go back there with, with the new eyes, <laughs> the new lens that I'm looking at things through now, because when you look at these steps that go up, there's this. There's always been this weird depression down here. Like, these windows go down. So, this yeah, is- Yeah, there's, there's usually, like, a, like, an alley down there, right? Yeah, you can drive. There's, like, a, a, a driveway that goes down underneath these steps and then back up the other side. Mm -hmm. And- um it's very strange. And, um, you know, now that I look at that with this whole like mud flood idea in mind, that there was some, maybe some kind of liquefaction event that changed where the entrances were placed in the street levels, which, you know, gets back to Seattle's silly. Yep. <clears throat> Newark was an absolutely breathtaking, beautiful old world city but you know what the thing is the more i look into it a lot of cities were like this mm -hmm. that we wouldn't even have a clue about can you imagine if they built high schools like this now yeah like, or look, go look at like old baltimore is another one that's <laughs> one that like i was like baltimore no wonder why it's a crack den now i mean anything that was glory take all of your ghetto cities now and at one time, they were beautiful. Yeah. The cities were left to rot. They were left to decay. They yep. were abandoned. Yep. Detroit. Yeah. Oh, that's a big oh, one. Right? <clears throat> but it just, it goes on and on. It goes on and Look, on. Look, wow. There it is. There it Look. is. That's what I was, I think this is Sacred Heart. It's a stunning building. And again, I'm embarrassed to say I did not visit it. I didn't. And it's got the copper go roof. Copper's not very conductive. Mm hmm Right? <laughs> <laughs> they just put it up there for decoration. And then... Yep. This I took this photo myself. That's what you start seeing nowadays. I took this photo myself because I, the last trip I took there, I was like, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> 
where, what about all these old world buildings? And, and this is what I found. And, yeah. and, and to its credit, the current mayor, Raz Baraka, I, I, I worked on his <clears throat> political ca- campaigns when I lived in, in Newark and I was more politically active. Um, there's a big grassroots campaign that got him elected. He's the son of Amiri, Amiri Baraka, um, who's, you know, he wrote, he wrote the book blues people back in the sixties. Um, and uh, anyway, long legacy of, you know, <clears throat> civil rights and, and so forth in that family, in the Baraka family. Um, so Raz got elected. He's the mayor uh, of the city now. And to their eternal credit, uh, they are making efforts to uh, revive or at least restore in some measure some of the old building stock that's left. There's that's this one you could look thing. up called. What's that? Oh, it's a beautiful thing. Um, there's one called the Kruger Scott mansion uh which you can look up um and it's just a beautiful old world brick red brick building that they're restoring and they're turning into a i believe a community center but um yeah that's it that's what that's newark today um sad to say and it's a it's a a common story um but um yeah, like you say, go to Detroit, go to Baltimore, go to San Francisco. Yeah. You're going to see all the same stuff. Yeah, and and you know, it didn't make sense to me for a very, very long time. Where I'd say, you know, I'd ask myself again: the Gilded Age. They built, they built all this splendor, only to abandon it. Yep. How does that make sense? Unless they weren't connected to it at all because they didn't build it. So they didn't. They just they had no pride in ownership. They were like they used it until they were done using it, and then they went out to their private islands or wherever. Yep, you know, where wealthy goes. Yeah, they and they destroy system. it and change code and all that fun stuff. Yeah, <clears throat> oh, that's amazing! Wow, hey, that was that was a great presentation, man. Thank you. I've been I've been waiting. I've been waiting for actually a few years for somebody to, in this community to talk about newark and nobody has so i'm happy to be the first i feel we're like gonna I'm we might have to do a dive into newark that might be one on the horizon here yeah there is uh yeah it's a it's a fascinating history and growing up in new jersey like it 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 didn't strike me as odd that there would be old world buildings because newark itself it's one of the, if not the oldest city in the country, it's like mm-hmm. 350 years old. And there's been well, it's many... Newark, right? You... They wanted to create the Newark there. That was the idea. Yeah, now, you got to be careful because there is a Newark, Delaware. Yes, if you're from the East Coast. You you know what state you're you're from, but how you pronounce Newark. how they pronounce it. Yep, I've traveled through there many a times. So. So anything else you want to get out? Well, geez, I mean, just to kind of recap, you know, again, this 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 idea of I, I think that I think that researchers into old world architecture and megalithic architecture, um, you know, even if it, people are into this idea of Tartaria or what have you, I really think that it would it would uh, benefit the community to spend some time with this electric universe theory. Because I really believe that this is a, it's like a missing link in um, helping us to sort of like understand, understand uh, what these, uh, this old world architecture was doing, you know, what was it doing? The purpose, and, right? And the, the purpose of it. Yeah. Um, and so I, I, you know, I hope, um, I hope I succeeded in, in at least, you know, in, in sort of orienting more people uh in in the in that direction um but i think that we need to i need think that we need to acknowledge that the ether is real any any science that denies the existence of the ether is just off on a wrong track and it's it's destined to ultimately fall apart and i think again that i think that's what we're witnessing and the idea that spirit and 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 matter or spirituality and science are antithetical to each other is a false dichotomy it's yep. it's a deception and i think it's yep. doing us a great disservice and the, and the thing is the truth can stand up to the questions the yeah. lies they always fall apart because what do you need yeah. to do you need to create more lies to cover up your lies and that's what we're finding is that 
as you dig through this and you start getting back to the source materials, you start seeing the narrative changed, you know, and the narrative shifted significantly and, and there was a reason for it. And, you know, there's something being hidden. What is what we're digging for? That's um, it. And, and we're just digging. We're asking yeah. questions. Yeah. And that's it. And there, and like you said, I, I want more people to get into this because I'm, I want to get more into the, the electric universe. Cause I do think you're onto something. I think there is a tie here to tie in all the loose ends that we're trying to, to fit into this old world bucket. And I think this does a great job of giving us another perspective to understand how it all work together and how this came about and how it is natural. It's not as unnatural as some may think. These are natural geometric patterns. Yeah. And I will say this much. I think for certain, if the universe is electric, the old world architects, builders knew it. Yes. They knew it well. Oh, yeah. Because they had to. They had to... They had to know it a to be able to build a building, right? And 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 well, design it first, then build it physically. Build it. They needed. They had to have this. So with the characteristics that these old world structures, sacred temples, and sacred buildings show. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, absolutely, yeah. Matthew. Oh, this was great, my friends. Uh, fun, you want to tell the people where they can find you or reach out? Well, uh, people can find my architecture work at dreamdesignbuild.org. Uh, I have a personal um, sort of art and pontification website that I just launched. It's at matthewrsmith.art, A-R-T. And I'm on Instagram at Yurt Designs. Matthew. Thank you very much, my friend. This was excellent. And we, <laughs> will, we will definitely be getting together again because we got yeah. much, much more to uncover in this old world. So thank you, my friend. I appreciate your time and all your great effort. This was a great presentation. Likewise, Everyone go su support Matthew and all his great work. If you're interested in a yurt, check it out. <laughs> all right. Stay strong and question everything.